Asane kuti ba mata anale pasiba. Goranga gunera ni de kota gele pago. Goranga gunera ni de kota gele pago. Se saba sangira sange Je koi lo vila Saba sangira sange je koi lo bela. Se sanga na paya kande na rakamada. Se sanga na paya kande na rakamada. Jayanila prema dana karuna praja. Eno Prabhu Kota Gela Charya Tako Eno Prabhu Kota Gela Charya Tako Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Bhakti Chara Swami Jaya Guru Deva Bhakti Chara Swami Jaya Guru Deva Jaya Bhakti Chara Swami Jaya Guru Deva Bhakti Chara Swami Jaya Guru Deva Jaya Vaishnav Tako, Vaishnav Tako, Vaishnav Tako, Jaya Vaishnav Tako. Jaya Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhupada. Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pa Prabhu Pa Prabhu Pa Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pa Nita Go Hari Ba Hari Ba Hari Ba Nita Go Hari Ba चर समाज की जय शिव भोपाल की जय सामवेद भक्त बंद की जय ताय गोपनंद eternal service um his departure cannot uh, is just but a punctuation because it's eternal service so in that light I um, would like to ask the different devotees to speak, um, and we, wish, we shall start with. 
Dineshwar Prabhu. Um, Dineshwar Prabhu, if you can please unmute yourself and speak. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, dear God brothers, sisters, and well wishes. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> I know this is a very difficult and emotional time. So I just pray that we be strong for each other and in whichever way we can support each other, that will be a wonderful offering for Guru Maharaj. So we seem to have lost uh, Prabhu there a little, uh, maybe perhaps due to his internet. But um, yes, um, as Prabhu mentioned, Maharaj, uh, 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 all of us need to support each other. And what comes to mind to, uh, to me is like when the gopis were feeling deep separation from Krishna, one of the things they did when their hearts were burning in separation um, was to uh, remember the glories of Krishna and speak about the glories of Krishna, and thus their hearts became appeased. So it is for that purpose to, que uh, to quell the burning of separation in our hearts that we are here, uh, gathered here today to depend on each other and gather strength from each other, as Dineshwar Prabhu mentioned. So um, I uh, now ask Manu Samita Prabhu, to kindly unmute himself and uh, speak. Hare Krishna. Hare Can Krishna you Prabhu. You audible? Okay. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pustaya Bhutale. Shrimati Bhakti Charuswami Iti Namine Om Jnana Chimalandasya Jaranjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militam Jena Kasmai Shri Guru Venama Okay, uh, I'd just like to share a few memories, uh, you know, of myself and when I traveled with Guru Maharaj. Uh, by the kind mercy of Shiv Shankar and, and Guru Maharaj, I was allowed to travel with them overseas. And I got some mercy while I was traveling, you know. I decided to go and serve Guru Maharaj and, uh, because I was fairly new in the movement and I was wanting some experience. So I'd just like to share some fond memories of our uh, travel. And... Uh, just uh, the striking qualities of Guru Maharaj that really struck me and stuck into my uh, mind over these years was Guru Maharaj's kindness to every living entity or to everyone. You know, when we were traveling, I booked economy class to travel with Maharaj. And uh, Maharaj was traveling, traveling first class with Shoshan to travel. And uh, when he heard how I was traveling economy, he decided to downgrade, you know, he asked Shiv Shankar Prabhu to downgrade the ticket so that we could all sit together and not to make me feel like I'm uncomfortable or whatever. But obviously I didn't mind traveling economy class, but he just struck me, you know, Maharaj is so kind just to make the devotees feel welcome. And, uh, even during the house programs in South Africa, uh, one could notice, you know, Maharaj's concern for the devotees. And as soon as Maharaj would see, see us, the first thing he would ask is, how are you doing? And did you take prasad? And he'll have a wonderful smile and he'll welcome you. So that's the caring nature of Guru Maharaj, and it was so overwhelming just being around with him. You know, just these uh, sort of demeanor made you feel so good. And uh, another striking quality of Guru Maharaj was his steadiness in his devotional service. You know, after many long hours of flight, 
and doing a lot of programs during the day. You know, we all were exhausted, but Maraj never gave up waking up early in the morning. You know, before three, you could hear him like chanting the Ma Mantra. So this struck me as being, you know, very, you know, Maharaj was very steady in his sadhana. Even with all the house programs and the travel in between, he never sort of, uh, he never sort of rested or took a break. He always kept his sadhana going. And, uh, you know, the shocking thing was <laughs> when I went on the trip, I wanted to serve Guru Maharaj, but he was actually serving us more than I was serving him. You know, inviting us to take prasad with him, even to sit with other Maharajas, even when we went to Laguna Beach to see Giriraj Swami. Uh, he invited me to take prasad with him, and I felt so uncomfortable. But that was Maharaj's nature, you know. He just wanted to make you feel welcome. and. He did not mind us having us around to take the sun. And uh, he also always made these arrangements for accommodation to make sure we had facade and always caring about us. This really touched my heart and uh, we left a very deep impression over these years. And uh, what attracted me to Guru Maharaj was his saintly qualities. When I joined the ISKCON around the 93, uh, you know, I was just attracted to Maharaj's uh, qualities of a pure devotee. You know, the 26 qualities of a pure devotee was just predominantly in Guru Maharaj. You know, his, his uh, very learnedness in Shastra and the way he sang, his kirtan, his kind nature, I somehow got attracted to him and I wanted to take shelter at his lotus feet. And uh, just two realizations or questions I would like to sort of uh, get answered or throw across to the devotees was that when I asked Guru Maharaj, how does one attain spiritual perfection? Does one need to work or, or does one need to join the temple? And Guru Maharaj mentioned that one can attain spiritual perfection even whilst working. However, if one is engaged in bhakti yoga in the temple, it is more preferable. But since Krishna consciousness is more an internal development, one's external situation is not important. So this to me, this was a mail I received from Maharaj in 1998. So I kept it uh, along these years just to reflect on what he was saying. And uh, also, during our email conversations, I asked him, how does one endure the pain of the passing away of a dear loved one? Because I mentioned to Maharaj that he seems to be very equipoised and I wish I could be like him. And uh, Guru, Ma Guru Maharaj replied that it, was pain that it is very painful when someone near or dear to us that passes away. However, he advises us to read Bhagavad Gita and try to understand the teachings given there. This will teach me how not to be attached to the body and objects related to the body. The more one gets situated in spiritual identity, the less one will be attached attracted to material attachment. So this like sort of uh, has given me a lot of comfort. And even though, you know, there's a lot of like uh, trials and tribulations of one losing someone, this sort of knowledge has helped me. And uh, another striking quality of Guru Maharaj was his, you know, he was extremely suchi. You know, that really struck me, you know, when we were traveling and also when we took prasad and uh, he never allowed us to uh, allow me to answer the cell phone you know while taking prasad if it rang you know because of obviously being very suchi and he didn't allow bead bags to be by the table when one was taking prasad just this 
personality, you know, it just really struck me as being a very, you know, very extraordinary personality. So thank you, Guru Maharaj, for your mercy upon this fallen soul. All glories to Guru Maharaj, His Holiness, Bhakti Chau Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. So just to let everyone know uh, before we continue that if this call gets cut off, uh, just use the same link and come in because uh, Ganesh, Ganesh Prabhu's uh, Zoom could not be activated in time. So it's 45 minutes. So if it gets cut off, you, it'll, it'll close out. Just go back to the link, just come back in, and then we'll continue. Um, for those that uh, entered the room a meeting a little late, uh, Manu Samita Prabhu started by speaking or sharing how Maharaj actually was uh, traveling with him and Shiva Shankar Prabhu, and they had booked business class, and Prabhu had an, uh, was flying economy. And when Maharaj heard that, he downgraded his ticket to economy to, uh, so that Manu Samita Prabhu felt comfortable and I thought that was so amazing. Um, and Prabhu also spoke about uh, Maharaj's sadhana. And we all know, um, I remember Vashavanabi telling me that when Maharaj used to stay at Shiva Shankar's house at two o'clock in the morning, you could hear through the wall uh, of his room, in the next room, his chanting. So, uh, it is such a great uh, example of one who takes responsibility for one's own spiritual growth that nobody's watching uh, whether he's waking up and chanting at that time. But he uh, taught by example how we should take responsibility for our sadhana and uh, because that is our foundation that would keep us up uh, uh, in our Krishna consciousness firmly footed in the process of Krishna consciousness. So um, I'd like to ask uh, Himavati Radhika if uh, she could unmute herself and speak. Hi, Krishna. I can hear you. Mm -hmm. So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my most humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Gurmaraj. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Charu Swami Tinamune, Om Agyan Tamirandasya Gyan Gyan Shantra, Chakshur Amritam Yenatas Neshi Gurve Namaha, Pancha Kaupataru Vishra, Kripa Sindhu Vevacha, Patitanam Pavanebhyo, Vishnu Vibhyo Namo Namaha. So Gurumaj told me that sweet recollections are always memorable. It's true, my sweetest recollections in my life was in the association of Guru Maharaj. I'm in no position to glorify such an outstanding, brilliant, illustrious, pure, and most humble Vaishnav as Guru Maharaj. But I'm offering this small offering just to express my love and my gratitude because Guru Maharaj has done so much for me and I am eternally indebted to Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj's love is the most outstanding quality. For me, Guru Maharaj is love personified. I came from a very loving home, but when I met Guru Maharaj, I've never seen such love. His love is pure and deep because it's filled with Prabhupada and Krishna Prem. Guru Maharaj loves Prabhupada so much that he made the Abhay Charan and just from watching this, it transformed my heart, making me want to get the shelter of a guru. And by Srila Prabhupada's, um, um, sorry, just by watching this, it transformed my heart, making me want to get the shelter of a guru. And by Srila Prabhupada's mercy, that guru was His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. When I was sick, Guru Maharaj had told me to come to Ujjain. He was opening an Ayurvedic clinic so I could take some treatment to get better. 
because Gurmaj said, I just went, traveling alone abroad for the first time ever, but by his mercy, I was protected. Gurmaj made the most wonderful arrangements for me, like royalty, even though I was only his insignificant beggar. Such love and care I never had ever before. I stayed for five weeks in Ujjain, and Gurmaj used to be so kind, checking up on me, and he was always asking how I was, and this touched my heart so much, and it increased my faith and love in Gurmaraj. I saw his love for the other devotees, for all the devotees on the last pilgrimage. We were in Jagannath Puri, and Gurmaraj arranged such a large variety of Jagannath Mahaprasad for all the devotees, because he felt that the previous day, there were only so few preps. So that's so much of love. So Gurmaraj also told me, he said, when you chant or when you do any devotional service, do it with all the love in your heart. So Gurmaraj said, love is meant only for Krishna. So Gurmaraj loved us all so much and so much that we can't help but love him so much unconditionally. I believe that my health improved because of Gurmaraj's love, not because of the Ayurvedic treatment. <clears throat> so Gurmaj is, is all powerful and he knows everything and Gurmaj is always with us. So to illustrate this quality of him, once I had four questions to ask Gurmaraj and they told us the darshan is only 10 minutes. So I only asked three because I thought there's not enough time. And Gurmaraj asked me, what's your last question? You have one more question, right? I couldn't believe that. And then once I had a very bad fever and it just didn't subside, I took medicines and everything. And then Guru Maharaj just phoned me and I spoke to him. And as soon as I put the phone down, my fever was gone. So Guru Maharaj renders pure and perfect devotional service. And he appreciates even the very little that we do. I was doing some secretarial work for Guru Maharaj and I saw his perfection and his eye for detail. He missed nothing. He was so careful and so attentive. I saw this also when Gurmaj was cooking at Mother Bhagwati's house. He was such an expert cook, that, like the size of the vegetables. He ensured it was thoroughly washed, the measurements, so many things. And what was the result? It was perfect devotional service. And it, it tasted so transcendental. So Gurmaj always said thank you in the most beautiful way because he appreciated every little thing we did. Gurumaj was the most eloquent speaker. He had the unique ability to make the most esoteric Vedic concepts so easy, so understandable. I learned this when I do the Ocean of Nectar e-magazine and hearing and subscribing, transcribing Gurumaj's lectures. Gurumaj was a celestial singer with the most beautiful voice, perfect pronunciation, beautiful Bengali and very pure chanting. So another aspect of Gurmaj, he offers everything to Srila Prabhupada, everything for Srila Prabhupada. Because one day I gave Gurmaj some beautiful orchids. It was Maha uh, from Gonitai, but still he looked at it and he said he wanted to offer it to Prabhupada. So he showed me how to put it together uh, like a bouquet type. And then I offered it to Srila Prabhupada at the, at the temple and then he took it. So I learned from that, that if we offer everything to Guru Maharaj, he will offer everything to Srila Prabhupada. So I have been very uh, fortunate to have so many sweet recollections with Guru Maharaj. He was so merciful to me, so much at Harinamananda uh, and Bhagavati Mata, Harinamananda Prabhu and Bhagavati Mata's house. By their kindness, uh, Nanarikanta Prabhu and myself, we got to serve and develop our relationship with Guru Maharaj. So we're so indebted to them. And we also see how Guru Maharaj's disciples are so wonderful and all the followers are so wonderful. Devotees are so outstanding by his example. So Guru Maharaj describes how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu makes everyone chant. Like he was saying in his lectures from Lord Chaitanya's birth on an eclipse, people was chanting. When he was a baby, when he cried, Everyone was chanting. But now I see how Guru Maharaj not only made us all chant, but he taught us how to cry for Krishna. So today, 
I, I pray, <clears throat> I pray to um, make Guru Maharaj instructions, my life and soul, and to become fixed up in my Krishna consciousness so that I can become an instrument in his lotus hands. I also pray from my heart to Guru Maharaj that all of us, we always cry for Krishna. I thank Guru Maharaj for everything. He's given me everything and more than I deserve. I pray to Guru Maharaj and all the devotees, all, all of you devotees, that I may always serve the devotees in Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON and have association of devotees and never offend anyone. I pray to Guru Maharaj that one day I will, I will purify myself so, so that I can reunite with my beloved Guru Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada and wake up from this dream. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So um, when Himavati Radhika Mataji was speaking so uh, sweetly about such a sweet personality, I uh, was remembering how that the pain we are feeling from his separation is actually what he experienced because um, I remember at the Drakensberg, uh, one of the retreats nicely organized by Himanga Chaitanya Prabhu, um, that Maharaj was explaining that when Srila Prabhupada left this planet, he was feeling so desolate. Actually, you would all recall that when he was um, uh, the last person to put Prabhupada in Samadhi, uh, you'll see the photographs of how Maharaj was the last person still holding on to Prabhupada when uh, the salt had reached Prabhupada's head. And he, uh, you would recall that Prabhupada's, uh, Maharaj said that at that time he felt uh, that uh, he just wanted to stay there with Prabhupada and Tamal Krishna Maharaj uh, recognized this feeling and called him uh, to please come up. And Maharaj explained how he um, was feeling so desolate after Prabhupada left that he went to the Himalayas with some of his friends and they, he just went wandering on, on, on pilgrimage. But then he realized that he had to come back and that he had um, a debt to pay to Prabhupada. And for the last four decades, Maharaj exemplified this um, in, in the pain of separation, how he kept Prabhupada, uh, uh, Prabhupada's mission in the forefront of his entire existence right up until the end. So um, we shall all pray together to follow such an example to also survive this painful separation. I'd like to ask um, Purnendu Krishna Prabhu, to speak. Kunandu Prabhu, please unmute yourself and Hi, <laughs> You look, can like, hear you. you look like you're um, gonna charter a spiritual all of yeah. us on a spiritual aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't cry now. Hi, Krishna, dear devotees. Um, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. Um, personally, this has been the most painful experience. And the separation from our um, dear spiritual master is unbearable. So my only solace is that Guru Maharaj is with his beloved Srila Prabhupada. I take comfort and shelter, even more of his vani, and make it my life's purpose to follow his instructions and example. Although this is a very difficult time, I wanted to reflect on the good fortune of finding and associating uh, with our dear spiritual master. But before that, um, I just want to mention a few points about how I came to this whole process. I had always been attracted to Krishna consciousness. Um, we were the typical Hindu family, but deeply spiritual. Um, and my first encounter with uh, devotees was when I was five years old. 
Uh, Harin and Pati was going past our home in Phoenix uh, in the early parts of the morning. All I could remember was this was the sweetest sound that I had ever heard and I was so attracted to. So I opened the window and saw the Sankirtan Pati devotees um, walking past our home dressed in white, the Dangas, Kartalas, chanting um, so sweetly. Um, so every morning I'd wait for them to go by just to see them and hear this sweet song. I didn't understand the song. And so I told my mother that I wanted to, to go with them. She said, that's okay, they'll take you away. And, and they did take, take me away, and I'm, happy, I'm glad for that. Um, I never realized my good fortune, as we had Srila Prabhupada's books, which my granny would read to us. Uh, my pastime was to scribble in Srila Prabhupada's books and to cut out the pictures and, and make my own stories. Um, I was attracted to the glossy Nishimadev picture, which I cut out and made my own pastimes. Um, as Providence would have it, um, we missed uh, the 1985 opening of Shishirada in the temple. Even though we were meant to go, we, we never took the process, even though we came in contact with uh, devotees later on as the years went by. Um, at university, I attended BYS, uh, Relish Food for Life Briyani, had a good association of devotees in my class, and my dear god brother, Radha Damodar Prabhu, as a lecturer. So in, in times of difficulty, I, I always took shelter of Lord Krishna, particularly Srila Prabhupada's books and Bhagavad Gita helped me through some challenging years. Um, I became attracted to Shishira Radna temple and, and the deities and not the same darshan pictures that, went, uh, that were sent by Radha Damodar Prabhu. When I got a job up in Joburg and Akai, I, I would visit Shishira Radna temple uh, regularly, whenever I was in Durban. Um, what attracted me most was the devotees. Um, their selflessness, um, their, their loving mood, the family spirit, um, um, the loving exchanges, the peace and tranquility to be found um, in this beautiful community. But still I did not surrender, even though I was engaged in some service. Um, on a fateful day, um, 10th January 2012, whilst at a Hindu temple in Phoenix, I'd become really offended after the, the speaker blasphemed Lord Vishnu. I immediately left there and along with a friend uh, was also favorable. We went immediately to Shri Radna temple um, only to find the program um, that was going on for the case that in um, I recall I sat in the back near Shri Prabhupada. The class had just ended and everyone was taking darshan of the spiritual master. So Krishna Prabhu, uh, Krishna Kripa Prabhu, a very apt name, told me it's most auspicious to take darshan of the spiritual master and that I should call. So anyway, we joined the line, and then when it was our turn, we immediately paid obeisances and were greeted by the greatest uh, and, and the sweetest smile. My heart melted as, as Guru Maharaj began to speak. He said to me, you look familiar. Have we met before? I'm sure we met. To which I responded, we haven't met, but I, I did feel like I really knew him, and I was, was so comfortable in his association. It was like meeting a dear old friend who, who I had deep feelings for. I was just so attracted to this personality and I didn't know why. Uh, Guru, Guru Maharaj asked what my name, um, where I was from, and um, what my occupation was, um, etc. And, and then he asked if I had any questions for him. Overwhelmed uh, with emotion, I said, we just want your mercy and blessings. He said, all right, that's okay. And, and, and he paid obeisances. It was at that moment that I felt um, Guru Maharaj's love and, and, and shelter. I felt so safe, so cared for. I, I recall I, I didn't want to leave his association as he spoke to the um, devoted children uh, whilst making his way out of the temple. I kept touching the ground um, before his feet. Um, um, and I recall some of the youth were laughing and I couldn't help myself. Uh, I was so attracted to him. I understood then that the mood I have been attracted to at Shishirara in a temple is emanating personality. Um, after hearing now you know, all that Guru Maharaj did for Iskon Durban, Shishirara in a temple, you know, during that the, the period of difficulty, and I understand that this mood at Shishirara in the temple was cultivated by Guru Maharaj, the family spirit, as he chose to focus on cultivating and strengthening, strengthening the, the Grashta Ashram. So in, in 2012, by the grace of Mother Radmat, my uh, Radma production guru, I surrendered and began uh, following the process. Um, I got more involved in devotional service and 
would regularly visit Shri Temple to offer some service during festivals. In 2012, the devotees uh, introduced me to the visiting Ganga Narayan Prabhu, uh, now Bhakti Prema Swami. And he was very kind and instructed me on the way to approach Gurmaj. So I managed to visit the, the devotee home at Gurmaj was uh, staying. I got to speak to Gurmaj alone and I, and I begged for shelter. Gurmaj instructed me on, on different aspects of my life and service and asked me to you know, cooperate nicely with the temple authorities and continue with my service. Uh, the main point he, he stressed on um, was the mood in which we must do service. So Gurmaj asked uh, me to travel with him as his servant on his tour to other parts of KZN and as, as well as to Australia, Australia later in the year, probably in December. But I was unable to, as I had limited time in Durban and, and, and my granny had left her body more well, later on in the year, so I, I wasn't able to go to Australia with him. But I, I regret not being able to travel with him and serve him personally. Um, I remember when he was going back, so uh, we all gathered at the airport uh, when he was about to leave uh, Durban. Um, I was always in awe of the senior devotees and there was a very special relationship they had with Gurmaj. Gurmaj was always so loving and personal in, deep, in his dealings with all the devotees. But he had a special place in his heart for his, 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 uh, his dear most senior disciples and their children who he nurtured in Krishna consciousness. So I couldn't help but become attracted by this. The sweet way in which he always addressed devotees by their spiritual names reminded me of pastimes of Krishna calling his dear friends. So this was a dear father reciprocating with his dear children. And I prayed to, to someday have the same relationship, although I knew it would take time. And at the airport, I managed to garden Guru Maharaj. As I woke up, he lovingly rubbed my head and smiled. Um, his lotus hands took away every feeling of hurt um, or rejection, uh, every pain, uh, anxiety, and stress. Um, as Guru Maharaj was about to board, he, he began hugging their bodies. Uh, I was secretly, uh, secretly praying that you know, I would get one too. And he finally came to me and he gave me the most loving embrace. Um, I felt so safe and, and protected in his embrace. Um, I didn't want to leave him. I understood this to be the taste of the experience of, of, of loving exchanges in the spiritual world. I, I just wanted to get on the plane with him. Uh, Prabhupada Prabhu then gave me a big hug and I felt you know, Guru Maharaj's love to his disciples. And at Shurendra Krishna Prabhu's house, uh, we managed to get you know, intimate association with Guru Maharaj as he narrated Prabhupada pastimes. Um, in 2013, I managed to get some personal uh, service by, by the grace of uh, Himanga Prabhu and family, Himanga Chaitanya Prabhu and family. And Suman Prabhu taught me how to wash an Ayangu Maharaj's crop, and that became my service. And uh, Himanga Chaitanya Prabhu always engaged me in some service and was always you know, most welcoming. And I'm forever indebted for his kindness. I, I observed how concerned Guru Maharaj was for the devotees or well being. And his instructions were tailored to help them come out of their suffering conditions. You know, he was always so kind and gentle, which made him so endearing and attractive to everyone that came in contact with him. I would observe in awe how distressed devotees would enter Guru Maharaj's association and become totally transformed um, you know, after his expert counsel. And the bonus would be um, he would make sure that they took prasadam before they left and he saw to it personally that these arrangements were carried out nicely. Um, I was most fortunate to taste Guru Maharaj's stir fry noodles and chow mein. I understood then what, you know, what possibly Shrimati Radharani's cooking must taste like. Um, I never had the best of luck with emails to Guru Maharaj, but mainly because I didn't want to bother him as he's, he's so busy serving so many devotees and, and, and such important service for his son. I felt it, it was best that they all get a chance before me. So I would follow his online classes and retreats and try and associate with him by asking questions or extracting his instructions from these classes. And by the grace of, of uh, Nishingananda Prabhu um, and, my, and Mother Madri, I was cultivated in Krishna consciousness by them both. And uh, Mishin and the Prabhu uh, recommended me for initiation in, in 2013. Um, kneeling before Guru Maharaj at initiation, um, I was just so in awe of this great personality before me. Um, overcome by so many emotions and the weight of this most 
auspicious moment. I was taken under his shelter and my spiritual life had, had begun under Guru Maharaj's care. And whenever Guru Maharaj would give class, I was able to understand uh, his deep points, which are recount, recounted to Madam Maharaj, who said, but remember, we taught you that. But before I could respond, uh, Madam Maharaj said, your Guru Maharaj's words penetrates the core of your heart. And that's why you understand and remember, which I found was most profound. Um, whenever I did get a response on email from Guru Maharaj, I would be floating in ecstasy, literally. That would be the happiest day. Um, um, he was so sweet and kind in his response. I always understood his dealings to be what, what Krishna would, might, you know, would, might say. It, it was always so pleasing to the heart. Um, once as Guru Maharaj and a few devotees were on a, a japa walk around Shishirara in a temple around the moat, and I happened to walk by. Guru Maharaj put his arm around my shoulder and we began to walk together. Inquired how I was, also how the Johannesburg devotees were, and where they were staying, and if they were comfortable, and to let him know if anything is required. So this, this shows his uh, Guru Maharaj's care and compassion all the time. Um, our, our Parikrama uh, uh, visit um, on the lake to Ujjain um, for the retreat, it, it taught me a lot. Um, it's there that I learned what, what, what Sadhu Seva is. It's there that I learned what Vaishnava etiquette practically is and, and what devotee care is. Uh, Guru Maharaj installed us in every devotee there and managed all operations with, with such precision and care. As I was ill at the time, Guru Maharaj arranged to uh, Bhakti Prema Swami for medication and prasadam to be sent to my room along with devotees that would check up on me every few hours and Madam Maharaj and Shri Prabhu. Mr. Nanaka would also check up on me. When I did recover and when we, we would eat at the feeding hall, a devotee would be there, serving me even more, always on standby almost. So this meticulous care and high standards for devotees is what Guru Maharaj installed in the devotees from Ujjain. So Guru Maharaj would constantly ask how I was feeling and if I needed anything and how my mother was doing as she was also part of the third room. I learned what a magnanimous personality Guru Maharaj is and I understood that um, the Ujjain project is actually a blueprint for ISKCON in every respect. Um, whenever Guru Maharaj would, would visit uh, South Africa, it was always a, a festival mood. I, I recall not being able to sleep. Um, I felt like a child again, eagerly anticipating sports day or excursion or trip to the beach. Guru Maharaj made me feel like I was a child all over again. But then again, I am a child, his child. And my dear father was visiting. Harinam and the Prabhu, Madh Bhagavati and Nishayana and the Prabhu would call or message and engage me in some service. And through Nishayana and the Prabhu, I learned how to meticulously serve Guru Maharaj, the result of which was pleasing to Guru Maharaj, and I'm forever indebted for, for his guidance. Um, Harinam and the Prabhu, would insist I make some plan at work and come, although this was not always possible, I somehow or the other endeavored. Um, so it was a total festival mood, preparing garlands, assisting with preps, buying boga, which is like a meditation, trying to find the best of every item. Um, I recall a time when, when Shamurari Prabhu, who was in uh, Orlando, when I, uh, both of us were ecstatically threading garlands at the airport uh, before Gurmaj's arrival. So it was all about love and an offering to our beloved spiritual master, nothing else. Uh, we would then join the, the Kirtan party, uh, which uh, Nishimana Prabhu would lead. And, and this would attract bystanders and, and please Guru Maharaj as we walked through the airport. Uh, you know, that smile would be etched in my consciousness for an eternity. Our hearts were satisfied just by his loving glance as we garlanded, garlanded him and, and offered obeisances. And I couldn't tell who was more happy at the devotees or, or Guru Maharaj. I understood this relationship is transcendental, ever fresh and growing. I was more than happy to perform any form of service. And Harinam and Prabhu and Madhu Bhagavati are perfect hosts and taught us how to serve and please Guru Maharaj. We were offered so many opportunities to serve. To serve. I mean, the sweetest moments when, when Guru Maharaj had darshans and sang thereafter. And his, his words uh, brought us in alignment and his instructions ensured we always were protected in Krishna consciousness. He was our ever well-wisher 
and he helped us when we faltered or when we were weak. He always lifted us up and brought us to a higher standard. He never ever gave up on us. And he was so expert at doing this, which caught many unaware because he really did care. He was, he was hard as a thunderbolt and as soft as the rose, careful to never cause an offense as he understood, understood the heart of the Vaishnava, as he was the embodiment of that principle. So I really enjoyed the Jaffa walks and was fortunate to drive him the one time and he didn't care what type of car it was. He said, oh, Vivo, that's nice. Um, even though I wanted to offer him something better. And as fit as we were, we couldn't keep up the pace as good much. We just glided gracefully ahead. His children following eagerly behind. And the mantra from his lotus lips purifying and benefiting every soul in that area. Um, even more seat was the final darshan. Usually after a temple program, when Guru Maharaj would take some fruit or something hot to drink with a handful of devotees, we'd all be sitting at his lotus feet. And it was then, he was even more personal and he would sometimes write a, a pastime of Srila Prabhupada. We understood the depth of relationship Guru Maharaj has, has with Srila Prabhupada. Uh, we soaked every bit of nectar from our spiritual master. I, I never truly understood the purport or the meaning of nectar. Um, you know, nectar is often used um, until I heard my dear spiritual master, who for me is nectar personified. He was sad to leave Guru Maharaj's association and Hari Namananda Prabhu's home. But whenever we traveled in, in, in groups back home, we would recount all the sweet dealings of Guru Maharaj, how sweet the pastimes were, how sweet his dealings with the devotees were, how sweet his mannerisms were, how caring he was, how genuinely concerned he was for the welfare of the devotees, how he honored prasadam, how he practiced his sadhana, his qualities, his preaching spirit, and that, that he wanted us to imbibe, to push on the movement. So ultimately, we, we relished how fortunate we were to have his association and, and eagerly awaited the next day to start all over again. This was the spiritual world. Um, we were full and satisfied. And this was the taste of the spiritual world. Um, Guru Maharaj carried this in his heart and was distributing this love to everyone. And for those fortunate um, and receptive enough to accept this, you know, your life's purpose would become successful. And you know, the retreat in, in Drakensburg uh, taught me the depth of Guru Maharaj's Shastric knowledge. And I, and I developed an even greater appreciation and an attraction for him as a result. Again, the spiritual world manifested in Drakensburg. Um, as children, we sometimes may forget you know, um, how advanced our father really is uh, during our dealings. But when we observe the great spiritual perfection of, of the pure devotee and our father, um, we surrender even more. Um, I will always remember uh, this instruction, which is apt now and, and, and brings some sort of uh, comfort. In, in Guru Maharaj's words, the best and most effective way is to become Krishna conscious. We are all part and parcel of Krishna and we develop, and when we develop our relationship with Krishna, then this relationship with Krishna in the center will continue. How it will continue, we don't know. But the most possible way is probably that we will be there with Krishna in the spiritual sky. That's how I used to console myself after Srila Prabhupada left. I used to think that someday if I, if I can go back to the spiritual sky, then there I can find Srila Prabhupada and the way I used to feel that this is the impetus for becoming more fixed up in spiritual life. Our love for Srila Prabhupada is kind of forcing us to become serious in our spiritual lives and feel Srila Prabhupada or rather associate with Srila Prabhupada. That's why we have to go back to the spiritual sky and that's why you have to get out of this material world. So that, that's, that's a very powerful instruction. Another instruction that I've taken on as a personal instruction was to treat Guru Maharaj's god brothers or, or other gurus within ISKCON with the same respect, love and care we offer him. So they should be treated non-different. In every service I've, I've always uh, tried to serve with my heart and endeavor to the right mood and attitude to follow Guru Maharaj's example. Um, 
and I'm missing, I, 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 I'm missing deeply. I know my relationship with him is not limited to this lifetime, but has been in place from previous lifetimes and, and will continue to exist as he is my eternal spiritual master. I never for a second believed he would leave, but Krishna has his plan, which is the best plan. And as Gumach has, has, has given us the best example, of the mood of a preacher. And to all my God brothers and sisters, thank you for all your service, care and love that you have given to our beloved spiritual master throughout his Leela on this planet. I am eternally, eternally indebted to you all for taking such good care of Guru Maharaj. My dear Guru Maharaj, thank you for everything that you have done for me. I wish I, I could have performed um, more personal service for you, as I always desired to do this. But I will continue to serve you through your Bani. Every facility and everything I am or will be is because of your causeless mercy. I pray my family and I will follow in your example and serve your Vani, preach and do wonderful things for Shri Prabhupada's Iskand. Guru Maharaj, I love you and I pray I may serve you eternally. You remain the love of my life and I remain eternally your insignificant servant. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Bhakti Jarasal Maharaj Ki Jai. So on the screen right now, you'll see uh, this beautiful picture of Maharaj. And the quote below says, devotees apparently go through some difficulties at times, but those difficulties do not affect them by any means because they're always protected by Krishna's merciful embrace. So this, uh, when I read this quote just now, I was transported back in time to an evening when we gathered with Maharaj at Shiva Shankar Prabhu's house. And it was just after the uh, departure of His uh, Holiness Tamil Krishna Maharaj. And um, I think it was Jivananda Prabhu who asked Maharaj, um, how is it that, uh, how do we understand the departure of such an exalted servant of Srila Prabhupada and Krishna under such tragic circumstances. And Maharaj's uh, response remains very clearly etched in my consciousness by his mercy when he said that to see this video of how a devotee, what happens to the garment of the, that the devotee is wearing, which is the body. And he went on to quote the Bhagavad Gita explaining how one gives up old and useless garments and takes on. Uh, something better. Uh, so he, so it, it made such an impression in my life at that time. And then I recall that at the Glossiesburg, uh, Maharaj was uh, speaking about a time when he was traveling in India and he was uh, negotiating uh, the mountainous rain, possibly in the Himalaya, Himalayas or so uh, somewhere. And the vehicle actually somersaulted that Maharaj was traveling in. And he knew, he felt at that time that he, uh, you know, death was imminent and he began to cry out to Krishna. And he said he remembered chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and all of a sudden, while the car was somersaulting, he felt as if a warm embrace was protecting him. And in the days building up to today, uh, from the 17th of uh, June, when Maharaj was admitted into hospital, uh, every day, every night, I remember waking up and checking the Jitra's uh, response to see what was the new report, and I'm sure you all were doing that. And um, the picture that kept me alive and uh, helped me wipe the tears was the picture of Krishna embracing Maharaj at that time, and why not in the time when he was on the ventilator? So um, I'd like to ask Dinesh Prabhu, who we uh, uh, lost earlier on, if he could please unmute himself and uh, share with us the gems in his heart. Yeah. 
if um, it seems that we've lost him again. So I'd like it seems I, I'd like to ask uh, Rupa Rupa Goswami Prabhu. Rupa Goswami Prabhu, uh, you can share with us. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna Mataji. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you, Prabhu. Go ahead. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Guru Maharaj. I just want to reflect on the first time that I met Guru Maharaj. It was when Govardhan Prabhu asked me to join him to pick Guru Maharaj from the airport. And uh, I was excited, but I was also very, very nervous. You know, how would I react uh, with such an exalted soul? Like, but when Mar Guru Maharaj got into the car and he made me feel so comfortable that it was not bad after all. Like, you know, he just carried on chatting casually. and It was very, very humble and easy to get along with. The conversation continued at, at, at the house and Guru Maharaj was speaking uh, to me and he made a very profound comment or, or for that matter, an analogy which I have taken seriously. He said to me, imagine you are the father and your son bought you some sweets with your money. But before you enjoyed, he, your son offered it to you. How would you feel? And he paused for a bit. And then he says, similarly, Krishna owns everything. So if you offer or give back to Krishna with love, imagine how pleased Krishna would be. My experience with this comment was that when you give to Krishna, Krishna reciprocates, how true. And thereafter, uh, there was lunch prasad that was served. And I was very reluctant, you know, how could we have prasad? We'll, we'll have to wait for Maharaj. And he very lovingly asked myself and Namashestra Prabhu, please come and join them for, uh, at the table for lunch. And I, was, and I was like kind of scared again. And fortunately for me, I happened to sit ne next to Hari Namananda Prabhu. And we were watching how we eat because it was the first experience. And I must say Hari Namananda Prabhu was guiding me how do you, how you eat in front of Guru Maharaj because it was also taken that Guru Maharaj was very particular how uh, devotees eat. Just two years after, just over two years ago, after I got to initiation, I went to drop off the Dakshin at a devotee's house in Westville, and Guru Maharaj was resting. So I left the Lakshmi, and I also left. Not long thereafter, uh, I had a call and Guru Maharaj asked if I could come back to the house. So I went back. And so Guru Maharaj spoke so nicely, and he was a bit ill. He spoke very nicely to me. And here he left me with very, very important instruction. He said to me, very profoundly, he said to me, we must all help to grow Srila Prabhupada's mission. And that stuck in my head. So I, you know, now that Guru Maharaj is not around, I don't know how, but somehow I must contribute to growing Srila Prabhupada's mission. And another comment that Guru Maharaj made in, in some of those conversations, he says, Krishna has given you intelligent, use it. I've been to Eugene for Guru Maharaj's uh, Vyasya Puja over the last two years. Actually, it's called Srila Prabhupada's Memorial Festival and Vyasya Puja of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami. Yeah, again, but the, the way it is termed, you could see how Guru Maharaj is always profiling Srila Prabhupada first, which he always does. You'll always see him profiling 
Srila Prabhupada first. As a matter of fact, in my humble opinion, if it wasn't for the devotees, Guru Maharaj might not have a Vyasa Puja. The, the Vyasa Puja is actually for his devotees when I see the way uh, he profiles uh, Srila Prabhupada. So whilst I was there in a the crowd, in, in crowd of amongst many, probably about 2,000 people, Guru Maharaj spots me and he stops and he speaks to me. He asks me how I am. But more importantly, he asked me where am I staying and if I am comfortable. And if, and I'm, if I'm comfortable and I'm okay. It's so special, so personal, so concerned. And you know, I was, I, I was like overwhelmed with the love and care and this special attention to detail that Guru Maharaj gives to each and every individual. Like, you know, it was really, really special. Like, when I listen, when I, when I look at my own encounters with Guru Maharaj and look, listening to various Vaishnav speaking, how profoundly Guru Maharaj's character comes up to everyone that he touches. It, it's just so special, like, you know, I, I, I pray for Guru Maharaj's mercy to give me the internal and eternal power to connect to him. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, devotees, you would notice that we are past the 45 minutes uh, by Maharaj's divine mercy. Uh, Zoom has just given us a gift of uh, extra time. So thank you to, the, to Zoom for honoring this occasion and giving us this gift. Um, <clears throat> When Rupa Goswami Prabhu was uh, revealing the gems of the, from his heart uh, with regard to how the Vyasa Puja, I remember one of the very, very uh, emphatic statements that Maharaj would make was that he, uh, he understands that his position is never to equip the position of Srila Prabhupada. And actually at one time, he refused to have Vyasa Puja. And then different devotees like Lokanath Swami and others, many sannyasi god brothers, told him that it is not for you, uh, it is for the disciples to uh, become purified. And uh, they preached to him in so many different ways. And reluctantly, he then agreed, but he agreed that he will not follow it according to the Vaishnava calendar, but instead keep it on the day. 17th September. So unlike other Vyasa Pujas, we never ever cancel it if it's on a weekday and uh, celebrate on the weekend. We always celebrate the 17th of September because that's Prabhupada Sinyas initiation day and it's the day that Prabhupada arrived in America. So uh, that is quite an incredible thing. I'd like to ask the next uh, devotee to speak and that would be uh, Mr. Madhavikuru. Hare Krishna. Just want to find out if everyone can still hear. Are we audible? And they may not be able to. I think just, just type in the chat. Are we audible? Um, have you marked them? Have you lost them? Audio is soft. Yeah, because I notice I noticed the the sound the, the the mic wasn't moving. All right, so I think it should be okay now. All right, thank you. Yeah, I guess that's the challenge with the internet, but we have to just tolerate that. Namo Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Chodo Swami Tinamane. Namo Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane. Namaste, Sarasati Deva Gauravani Pichari Mamiri Sasunyavadi Pasitavistana. So I'd like to firstly thank all the devotees for sharing their wonderful memories with uh, Guru Maharaj. Uh, these memories are uh, checked into your heart, they are locked into your heart, which you should never forget and eternally treasure them. 
when devotees, uh, especially during Vyasa Puja and these occasions when they glorify uh, their spiritual masters, uh, I, it, it really touches my heart uh, because it is coming from their heart. And I really enjoy and relish every moment the devotees are sharing and speaking. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, Srila Prabhupada always taught us that uh, there are two ways we can serve uh, the spiritual master. Uh, one is through his vani and the other is through his vapo. And I always had my, my service to Guru Maharaj was really through, you know, being a temple president in some managerial position where I was serving a Guru Maharaj either by hosting a program or uh, when Guru Maharaj was also at Madran, staying there for a few days. So uh, my uh, my exchanges were, uh, you know, around that those services. But uh, I like to share a few instructional uh, pastimes that I had with uh, Maharaj. One time we were taking prasad in the prasadam hall, and Maharaj asked uh, Guru Maharaj asked for me. So the message came down that. Uh, Maj is looking for you. And, you know, naturally, whenever the spiritual master calls, just like Shula, uh, Guru Dev was saying that when Srila Prabhupada would ring the bell, you know, then immediately they would attend to Srila Prabhupada. So when Maj called, I was, I was taking Prasad and I was just about to get up. And Guru Maj actually at that same time came into the Prasadam room, Prasadam hall. And he noticed I was taking Prasad and I was just about to get up. And immediately he said, nope, uh, you should not stand up. Uh, you should continue because you are in front of Krishna. You are associated with Krishna. Uh, Krishna Prasad is non different, different from Krishna. So even if the spiritual master calls you, uh, then you should, uh, and you're taking Prasad, you should complete uh, and honor the Prasadam. So that was a very, uh, a very instructive lesson um, that. Uh, we should uh, always honor prasad, and prasadam is non different from Krishna. Uh, another time, I remember, in fact, it was just when we moved into the Hillbrow Temple. Uh, I was the temple commander at that time, and there was a lot of service services to be done. So, you know, if and the temple commander means if nobody does the service, you have to do the service. So. At that evening, nobody was nobody had nobody was there to do the garlands. So I finished the garlands, and I would generally, uh, you know, I, when I when I moved into the temple, I would sleep like six hours, and then uh, one senior devotee would come to Hillbrow and he would encourage me to sleep less. So I would sleep less. So I started sleeping five hours, and then when he would come again, he would sleep less, and I would sleep four hours, and. Uh, then you know it was basically I would go sleep at like two o'clock, uh, doing the service, wash my clothes, and up at four. So I was like at two hours of sleep. And then I in, took shelter of Guru Maj, got initiated, and I wrote him a letter. And I told him, uh, Maj, I'm sleeping for two hours a day. And Guru Maj sent a letter back. And in the letter, he said, "Stop pretending. I." Uh, uh, stop pretending and uh, I instruct you to sleep six hours minimum. So after that, I started taking six hours of rest. Then uh, one, now one time I went into Guru Maharaj's room and he wanted a pen. So I quickly went, got, it, got a pen and I came just at the door. So I opened the door with my right hand and Guru Maharaj was standing there waiting for the pen. And because I opened the door and Guru Maharaj was right there, I used my left hand, which I had a pen with, and I offered the pen with my left hand. And immediately Guru Maharaj chastised me. Uh, he said, never give anything with your left hand. So immediately I swapped the hands and I gave Guru Maharaj the mm -hmm. pen. And I'm a lefty. Then another time, just to emphasize, uh, how important our chanting of minimum 16 rounds is. This happened in 
Mayapur during Vyasa Puja celebration. And Guru Maharaj, we know uh, he would always uh, he would always have uh, the, the memorial service, glorifying Srila Prabhupada in the afternoon. And then in the evening, uh, they, and then they would serve the feast. And then in the evening, they would, uh, we would have glorification of Guru Maharaj. So that evening, everyone, so the program went you know, wonderfully. Everybody was, afternoon web program went wonderfully. Uh, then everybody was served Prasad very nicely. Guru Maharaj supervised everything. Uh, then the devotees took Prasad. And by six o'clock, the session of glorifying Guru Maharaj was starting. So everybody came into the, uh, into the room and Guru Maharaj was seated there, everyone sat. First question Guru Maharaj asked, who has not chanted the 16 rounds? And unfortunately, a lot of devotees picked their hands up. And Guru Maharaj was upset he was furious he was angry and not only that some devotees started coming in late walking in late that even made guru Maharaj even more furious because now you you know basically guru Maharaj is waiting for you instead of we waiting for guru Maharaj. and i could i could feel guru Maharaj's, you know uh, anger and guru Maharaj started to chastise everyone uh, you know, you know, and, and he, he made so many wonderful points. One of the uh, one of the important points is uh, that, you know, in, in a sense that, uh, you know, forget about glorifying me. You know, your first business is, you know, to change your minimum sixteen rounds and to preach. And Guru Maharaj sent everybody away to go change the sixteen rounds. So uh, that uh, was also very very instructive uh, to always chant uh, one's uh, rounds. Now, during this, you know, Guru Maharaj's last pastimes over the last few weeks, in fact, in about three, just, be, just before Guru Maharaj left Ujjain, a few days just before he left, Guru Maharaj called me uh, on my cell and uh, he received the letter and he asked me about the letter and we started speaking. And he also asked me how's people in South Africa, how's the coronavirus? And we spoke a little about the coronavirus and the impact that will have in South Africa and across the world. And then Guru Maharaj encouraged me uh, in my services and uh, told me uh, to continue focusing on my services. So I was very fortunate to uh, get Guru Maharaj's call uh, just before he left for Ujjain and uh, left uh, for America. And uh, we, you know, I'm sure everyone heard Guru Maharaj's last lecture in Ujjain where he's speaking about going to America. So I'd like to share two quotes by Srila Prabhupada and also i like to share my realizations, uh, my limited perspective and realization on why did Guru Maharaj leave Ujjain and go to America? And why did Guru Maharaj not leave this world with devotees chanting around him? So first, I'd just like to read two quotes. Uh, Srila Prabhupada wrote a letter to Krishna Das in 1968. To feel separation from the spiritual master of Krishna is very good position. That means one who is in pure love with Krishna and his representative, the spiritual master, he thinks always of them. And this thinking process is Krishna consciousness. If we can think always of Krishna, even in separation, that is Krishna consciousness. And in the absolute platform, there is no difference of separation and meeting. The separation is also meeting. Rather, in separation, one relishes the loving relationship more tasty. So don't be disappointed that you are separated from me. I am also always thinking of you, how you are making progress there. And I'm always expecting your letters that you are already op that you have already opened the center there and you are working nicely. So you have very beautiful Proverbs making the point uh, that even service in separation is even more relishable and more loving. Mm -hmm. In the spiritual world, there's always meeting and separation. And we had the wonderful opportunity to serve Guru Maharaj uh, while he was on this planet. And that service to the 
physical form of the spiritual master, the Vapu, we should always cherish. And the spiritual master form will never be eternally in front of us, but his Vani will always be eternally with us. And we can always serve. And by serving the Vani, now more than ever, uh, Guru Maharaj is accessible uh, you know, all the time, every time. As soon as we think about him and meditate on him, he is even more accessible. Guru Maharaj said, when the spiritual master leaves uh, this world, it's, he's simply hiding behind the curtain, looking at us. So uh, Guru Maharaj is really looking uh, at us. And we can take uh, solace that he is watching over us. So why did Guru Maharaj leave Ujjain and go to America? Uh, Srila Prabhupada left this world in Vrindavan right up to his last breath. Srila Prabhupada was dictating Srimad Bhagavatam, giving uh, the translation to Srimad Bhagavatam. Even though Srila Prabhupada could not pick up the mic, Srila Prabhupada could not even turn. Yet Prabhupada uh, was teaching by his own example that we are a preaching mission and we should die with our boots on in the battlefield. So Guru Maharaj could have easily left in Ujjain. Hmm? Srila Prabhupada says that one who chants Hare Krishna one time, there is no karma for him. All his karma is under Krishna karma. What talk about Guru Maharaj who's dedicated his, life, his mind, body, words, his whole life to Guru and Krishna, to Srila Prabhupada and Krishna. No doubt there is no karma. There is no material reaction hmm, for uh, the spiritual master uh, as uh, Srila Prabhupada hmm, I think he has written here, was said, uh, devotees, which one was it? One of the quotes uh, that for a devotee, there is no, uh, for a devotee, there's no material, or it was actually another quote, there is no um, material difficulties. It is all uh, Krishna karma, and Krishna would arrange. So Guru Maharaj could have easily left Ujjain, but, uh, why did he go to America? Guru Maharaj said, because uh, we are a preaching mission. And Guru Maharaj wanted to emphasize this, that our goal, preaching is the essence, our goal is to give Krishna consciousness to others. And he also wanted to you know, show that the preachers are very important and we have to look after them. Therefore, uh, to set that example, he actually went to America and uh, in the battlefield, giving support to uh, the soldiers in the forefront. And no doubt, uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, such souls are very, very exalted, very dear to him. Now, why did Guru Maharaj leave without devotees, apparently without devotees chanting in front of him? Uh, because some devotees feel, you know, it's unfortunate that Guru Maharaj had to leave in this way. So Sanatana Goswami in the 11th, uh, 11th chapter of Hari Bhakti Vilas says that, how a devotee leaves is immaterial, even if he leaves in his sleep or even if he leaves in an unconscious state, it is immaterial because throughout his life, he was thinking of Krishna. Therefore, Krishna will think of him in such situations. And there's a beautiful, past, a beautiful example to illustrate this point of a devotee called Krishna Das. In Bhakta Mala, there's a devotee called Krishna Das who was a great exalted devotee uh, in the Sri Sampradaya. And his worshipful deity was Srinaji of Nadwar, of Nadwar. And while he was on his way to Delhi, he noticed a, uh, a, a cook making jalabis. And when he saw the, the cook making jalabis, immediately he thought in his mind, does these jalabis, they should be offered to uh, Srinaji. These jalabis are meant for Srinaji. This is how he meditated. And in fact, in Natuar, Natadwar, uh, when it was offering time, the Pujari actually just finished the offering. So as the Pujari completed the offering, he, was, he went into the altar to take the offering uh, of the altar. And as soon as he went in the, 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 temp, the altar room, he noticed the plate that was there, his, that he had placed, but he also noticed a plate with jalebis. And he was shocked. Where did these jalebis come from? And he noticed the Lord had a jalebi in his hand. So just see how exalted Krishna Das was. There were so many interactions like this with Krishna Das, where the Lord would reciprocate with him. 
uh, you know, the Lord even created a song, uh, you know, on in, in his in, uh, assisting him. Uh, there was a transcendental competition, and the Lord made a song. So, like this, Srinathji was interacting and reciprocating with Krishna Das so wonderfully because of his exalted devotion and position. But when Srinathji became, when uh, Krishna Das became old, it is described that he was walking through the jungle. Uh, and he fell into a well and he left his body. So the devotees there could not understand how could Krishna's be such an exalted devotee and die in such a way. There is no Harinam, no devotees around him and he falls into a well and he dies. Uh, this is very unfortunate. He can't be an exalted devotee. And Srinathji could understand the minds, the doubts that the devotees had. So in order to remove the doubts, uh, Srinathji in front of all the villages there, Srinathji manifested, uh, allowed Krishnas to come and be physically present in his physical form, in his spiritual form, and speak to the devotees. And the devotees were completely shocked uh, that Krishnas in his spiritual form appeared and he started speaking to the devotees. He, he uh, greeted the head priest there. And then he said, in, in my past life as Krishna Das, I had buried some wealth at this place. You, you please go and uncover the wealth and give that in service to Srinathji. So in this way, we see how the Lord you know, had made arrangements, even though he, Shrinaji, what Krishna was a great devotee, but how he left this world was really immaterial. It was a lesson that we always have to have faith. One whose life is fully dedicated to the service of Krishna there is always auspiciousness. And Guru Maj, in such an amazing way, he glorified the Sangitan mission and got all the devotees across the globe uh, over the last few weeks. Practically, it was like a Mahayagya. Every single devotee in the world uh, that was connected to him in some way or other came together to pray, to chant, and to glorify Krishna, to intensely cry out. And finally, uh, uh, Gogori Mats was, was said one time that actually this movement is meant to make us cry for Krishna. And Prabhupada also said, if you can't cry for Krishna, cry that you can't cry for Krishna. And Gogori Maj made the point that when the spiritual master leave, naturally we will cry. And that crying is very good. Uh, it is healthy for our spiritual uh, bhakti. But now we have the opportunity follow Guru Maharaj's instructions, uh, and by following his instructions, uh, the disciple will eternally live uh, with the spiritual master. And we will find that our relationship will become even more and more sweeter, more and more intense in service uh, to Guru and Srila Prabhupada. Srila Bhakti Charu Maharaj Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Nithai Gopramanande. Was speaking at his venue, then he started to explain that the greatest fear for a human being is forgetfulness of Krishna. And um, uh, when Nishingananda Prabhu was just now speaking about uh, Maharaj is not the, not the place and how to understand that, what he explained was uh, Krishna's reputation is um, very, very mysterious. And it is the topmost. Uh, even though all the devotees all over the world were praying so much, uh, so many devotees were asking questions as, uh, you know, how can we see Krishna's mercy that Maharaj's situation is becoming worse and worse? And so, taking into consideration that the greatest uh, uh, fear is forgetfulness of Krishna, my um, realization was. When Haridas Thakur was being beaten in 21 marketplaces, his body was being tortured in so many ways. And we were re listening day after day how Maharaj was having plasma treatment. He was being, you know, uh, his kidneys uh, was being put on dialysis. So many things were happening externally to his body. But what was happening was Krishna's internal remembrance that he was giving uh, Maharaj was uh, an incredible form of mercy and the remembrance of Krishna that he gave to all of the devotees 
and created the auspicious stars on the planet, uh, all that goes to Maharaj's credit also that he did this. He simulated this uh, wave of love all through the planet. So Haridas Thakur, even when he was being beaten, he never forgot Krishna. And when um, uh, the devotee, what was his name, Govinda Pran, Maharaj's cousin, when he chanted Hare Krishna, Jay Pataka Maharaj said that Maharaj opened his eyes when he was chanting different mantras. When he chanted Hare Krishna, uh, Jay Pataka Maharaj explained that Maharaj opened his eyes at that time, at the very end. So uh, that was pretty incredible. I'd like to ask Himanga Chaitanya Prabhu and his family now to reveal to us, uh, to share with us um, some things. Um, to, uh, you can unmute yourself yeah. now, Prabhu. Hi, Krishna. Audible can you hear me? Yes. yes, Hare Krishna. We can hear you. Hi, Krishna Prabhu. Mataji, thank you, Nashikana Prabhu. And Mataji, Mataji, for allowing me to speak. I'm too nervous. As always, Namam Vishnu Padai Krishna Prashtai Bhuta Ishimate Bhakti Charu Swami Tinamis Nikta Jeta Supranita Vakunam Charu Saputu Prabhupada Kata Prana Nami Bhakti Charu Bhuta Namam Vishnu Padai Krishna Prashtai Bhuta Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamis Namaste Saswati Devi Gaurvani Prashtai Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Prashtai Shri Krishna Prabhupada Before the departure of our Guru Maharaj you know, I always, actually, I, I wrongly thought that my love for Prabhupada was maintaining me in my Krishna consciousness. And this love was more intense than the love I had for my Guru Maharaj. But now I realize that my feelings for my dear Gurudev is much more than the feeling, feelings I have for Srila Prabhupada. After the departure of our beloved Guru Maharaj, I'm experiencing intense feelings of longing and lots of regret. The strongest regret of them all is knowing that I took my Guru Maharaj for granted. I did not value his presence or his personal interactions, thinking that Guru Maharaj would be around for long. I often find myself wondering what my qualification was to have such a close and personal relationship with Guru Maharaj. To serve him, handle so many of his projects, travel with him, and even the privilege of sharing a room with him on occasions all of which I did not deserve. At the time I took my, I, at the time, you know, I took those glorious opportunities and his overflowing mercy for granting. He was like my father and I don't know, I don't know how am I going to carry on without him. Guru Maharaj would constantly ask me to stay in touch but my ungratefulness and foolishness, I didn't. In the last over a year, I distanced myself from Gurudev because I couldn't financially engage myself in D-Line, which is too expensive for dollars. I used to think that I could distance myself until I had the Lakshmi to give again to Guru Mahesh to help him. Still, seeing myself as the doer, what an opportunity I missed out in this misguided pursuit. Recently, I've been struggling to make Lakshmi, and it has now dawned on me that in those days of supporting Guru Maharaj, I had enough money and more of it without trying so hard. I was hardly in my business, I was more with Guru Maharaj, and the Lakshmi would flow. Therefore, now I can... Therefore now, I can understand that it is not me who's making the Lakshmi, but it was all coming to Guru Maharaj's guidance and his mercy. I recall one time when Guru Maharaj was asking me for some Lakshmi 
for one of his very serious projects. It was a big amount. And I said, sure, Grimach. I'm working on it, by your mercy. Every time he would call us, yes, sure, Grimach, by your mercy, it'll happen. I'm working on it, Grimach. After Grimach called me uh, about four or five times about this, then he eventually said, don't worry about my mercy. I need the money now. <laughs> it, was, it was so difficult to understand Gurudev at that time. I keep remembering, you know, I keep um, replaying such mm. fond memories I have with Gurudev. And my longing and regret just keeps increasing. After only hearing about the 70, of the impact of a Guru's departure on his disciple, you know, I mean, the severity, uh, the impact of Guru Mahaj's disciple, departure. I now understand just how severe the pain is and just how intense this attachment is. Many of you know that I lost my mother about four months ago. But any pain I experienced during that time is incomparable to this feeling of separation as a result of Guru Mahaj's departure. I had a lot of memories with my mother. But I was okay and content. I owe it to my mother, there was no doubt. But, from, but for my own selfish motive, I realized I can't do without Guru Mahaj because my future, how am I going to live, is dependent on my Guru Dev. I was so dependent on Guru Mahaj. Guru Mahaj has such a special place in my heart. And I, and I now realize that such a relationship is eternal and is not an ordinary or mundane relationship. I'm, I'm at a loss to explain the connection I feel to Gurudev. As I'm sure we are all feeling the same. I'm feeling this void inside of me that I'm unsure of how to fill it. I just pray that Gurudev, Gurudev knows my feelings and I have faith that he will continue to guide me and keep me sheltered. With Prabhupada, through his Vani, and through his legacy, he has left behind for us. I'd like to take inspiration, I'd like to take the inspiration from Gurudev on how he managed to go on without Srila Prabhupada, whom we all know. He had such an intense love for. This, while I was going through this in the last three days, I, I was just thinking, Gurumaj only had just about a year with Prabhupada, if not less. And he lived 44 years without Prabhupada, from 77 to, to now. How did he do that? And my love for Guru Maharaj is nothing as compared to what Guru Maharaj's love for Prabhupada was. And at no stage did Guru Maharaj make us feel, or we could feel that, that he was missing Prabhupada. Because he always carried Prabhupada with him. And at no stage did we realize that Prabhupada was not a feature in his life. Everything he did was for Prabhupada. So for, and, and, and Guma lived 44 years, I'm sure. I don't have 44, 44 years to live for now. I have much lesser time. So, what I'm trying to get at is, we can follow on Guru Mahaj's footsteps, which is going to be very difficult. To imbibe his mood that he had for Prabhupada. And try to live that life, which is not going to be easy. All Guru Mahaj did was for Prabhupada. Because I remember Guru Mahaj asking, asking Prabhupada once in 77. I feel so bad, Prabhupada, that I was not there. I wish I was there earlier with you so that I could help you, you know, you did everything on your own. And Prabhupada said, I was not alone. I was never alone. Likewise, Guru Maharaj was never alone. Whenever he did his project, Prabhupada was always with him. At no, at no time does Prabhupada was never with him. And I, in, a, in a class, Guru Maharaj spoke more about Prabhupada than Krishna. He connected, he gave me Prabhupada. 
I was thinking I was so close to Prabhupada. And today I realize I'm so close to Guru Maharaj. And I was, and I am still so close to Guru Maharaj. And thank you, thank Guru Maharaj for giving me Prabhupada. All I know about Prabhupada is through Guru Maharaj. I do want to keep Guru Maharaj's spirit and mood alive in a similar manner, but it is hard. Therefore, I humbly ask for all of you, your blessings and guidance so that I can achieve this. Guru Maharaj was so particular about taking care of Prabhupada's disciples. Of his own God brothers. Even the Ayurvedic center, in difficult times, there was no Lakshmi. But for Prabhupada's disciples, it was always free. Guru had wonderful pastimes. I mean, I have so much of amazing pastimes with Guru Maharaj. I don't know if I can speak on this forum. I don't know when to say, what to say, when to stop. This is the first time I'm speaking. I'm so grateful that I got an opportunity to speak. I want to follow Uncle Maharaj's mood, which is very difficult, like I said so many times, because he was, he was so patient. He was, so, he was such a gentleman. In my words, a Vaishnav has to be a gentleman. A gentleman may be a Vaishnav. I just hope I may one day able to imbibe all this, all this to be a good representative of Guru Dev. As he was a perfect representative of his Guru Mahal. Guru Mai once told me the Bhakti Prem Maharaj has Guru Maharaj in his heart. I'm looking forward to Bhakti Prem Swami Maharaj to help me stay connected to my Guru. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Prabhu. Please forgive me. Hare Krishna. Akash Shri Prabhupada. Thank you, Thank you so much, Rana Mataji. Would you like to share with us something? And uh, Rana Mataji. She's pretty down. Okay. okay. Um, so. Well, we just wanted to. So, Hamanga Chet, thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, you have tons and tons of memories of Guru Maharaj. We're going to nag you weekly so that you can record these memories and immortalize those memories for the benefit of all the God family. Uh, it is important more than ever now that we uh, document uh, you know, our pastimes with Guru Maharaj uh, and memories uh, so that at least we can by hearing those, by associating with those memories, we can in this way keep our connection alive. So we will be nagging you. I remember once Guru Maharaj asked me to do this project to take care of the Ujjain apartment, which he had got delayed for many years in, in giving the apartment to the, to the disciples. And then there were challenges that ISKCON does not want Guru Maharaj to give those apartments to the donors who had paid for it because the property belonged to his con. I wanted to give it to them as committed, but unfortunately the local GBC's bureau would not allow Gurumaj to give the transfer of the property, which in a way it went on well. We discussed later afterwards and we realized that was a good thing. Prabhupada was protecting us, but the devotees, there were so many devotees involved, they were delayed for over five, maybe 10, 12 years in handing over the project. So Guruman asked me to chair that, become a chairman of the body corporate, which was difficult again, because I didn't know those donors or people who owned the apartment. But since Guruman asked me, I said, okay, Guruman, I asked Guruman so many times to give it to someone who's locally present. He said, no, I want you to take care of it. I said, okay, Guruman. So I started trying to collect from everybody Let's contribute towards the maintenance, the rates, as we call it in South Africa, the government taxes that are involved. 
quite a few of them did give it, quite a few of them were not interested. So when I was pushing for them, I said, only hand over the keys to you if you give me that contribution. And, when, and the names were so from different parts of the world. So I didn't know them. And so I would go back to Grimai. I said, Grimai, this gentleman is giving me a hard time. This Prabhu is giving me a hard time. And he would tell me about a past time of that Prabhu. Every devotee there had some wonderful relations with Grimai. On occasion, he told me, this Prabhu was, yeah, he went through, he was doing some business from Dubai and he made me a 50% partner. So he contributed at that time. And but he spoke so highly of him and says, now his business is down, he's struggling. No, I said, yes, sure, Maharaj. I'm so scared, you know, of doing the service because there's so many offenses I'll be create, committing against those devotees who are so favorable to you and who've done so much of service for you. And I don't know any of them, you know, most of them. I remember Guma said that, don't worry, Manga. Don't you know that all your all your offenses are taken care of, man. So carry on, don't worry. I was pretty shocked. In one statement of Grumat said so much, you know, because these things I've only read in scriptures. I don't know when people talk about it like this. We don't realize that. I mean, when hearing from Grumat, you're like, oof, how careful you have to be and how protected you are when you're serving under Gurudev. So there were so many instances like this where I felt I was very naive and I was very transparent. I was very down to earth. So I should tell him as is. But that was a very, that was a very deep sentence that Grumai gave. And it was taunts on me. That how protected you are when you are with Rudev. Anyway, that's all, Prabhu. Thank you very much, Guru. Um, you know, uh, I recently heard Maharaj in a lecture uh, explain how sometimes out of love, a, um, a mother she wants to impel her son from the crawling stage to walk. And sometimes she may uh, hide from the vision of the child. So the child feels impelled to now search after the mother and walk. And then I saw a picture of Krishna uh, who never leaves Vrindavan hiding behind a tree and uh, looking at the gopis and seeing how they are um, uh, expressing their love for him. And um, it gave me some sh uh, strength to understand that even though Maharaj is not physically present, it's explained that a first class disciple, as Maharaj exemplified in his life, uh, behaves in a way as if the spiritual master is standing next to him at all times. So um, like a mother who's hiding and watching uh, the child grow, and mature, and Maharaj is also, uh, I have firm faith that he is watching us at all times in that manner, as you remarked. Um, I'd like to ask Rasa Stali to speak now. So Rasa Stali, if you could unmute yourself and speak. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pistaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Chur Swami Itinamine, Shnik Dicheta Supraneta, Vagmi Nam Chara Sapukam, Papa Chakapana, Nomi Bhakti Chaitra. Shri Srila Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances at the dust of your lotus feet. All glory is unto divine grace. All glory is unto you, Shri Prabhupada. Gurudev, I didn't expect I would be uh, speaking so soon on this occasion of you leaving this material world, returning back to the spiritual world, serving your most beloved Srila Prabhupada. This was your innermost desire, and even many occasions you verbalized this, and even once in your Vyasa Puja offering, you mentioned this. You had mentioned this. These past few weeks um, have been the worst ever um, after these four, now five months, um, already that um, started this year with so many inauspicious uh, happenings. And now we, all your children, have our hearts shattered in a million pieces with you leaving your physical form to go back home, back to, La back to Krishna Bhagwan. 
I was so hopeful and believing in my heart that you would fight to stay here a little longer just for us. But Srila Prabhupada needed you back with him for more important preaching somewhere else. This was very difficult for me to accept. And I realized with thousands of prayers of so many disciples, devotees, and well wishes, it was what the Lord, Srila Prabhupada, and your desire superseded all our prayers. I was very upset with you at first for not staying with us because you make miracles in so many fronts. Your preaching, your charm, you're dealing with so many spiritual political leaders and all the big, big dignitaries around the world, your work and dedication for GBC, your passion for serving Prasad to the children and to so much needed people, to all fallen souls, and even the reason you left safe, the safety of Ujjain to go to USA for the project of the Prasadam distribution that was given to all the medical staff. It didn't make sense to me why the Lord, knowing how much our ISKCON, this entire world needed your help to fulfill Mahaprabhu's mission of giving the holy name to everyone. I didn't understand why you had to leave us and, and, and Krishna Bhagavan took you away from us at this time. On the Saturday of your passing, I didn't realize you were going to leave. And I decided to observe near jail uh, fasting so that you could get for a speedy recovery for you to get better. And I did the same on the Ekadasi in the week, but I didn't know that I was actually fasting for your leaving this world. I realized that there's this direct link that we share with you, Gurudev. And I didn't know that even before you got sick, I, I just had this intense desire that I needed to chant, chant, chant for you. I don't know why. And then we were hearing the news about you having high fever and not feeling at well to give classes. And I just realized that there's some link we have when we, are, when we have taken shelter under you. And there's some reason we pray. And, and even when I was speaking to Mother Bhagavati, when we phoned her, um, when we heard of your news, she was saying that she won, it was her desire to, to, to do Nirjo um, and, and, and you know, often uh, on the Ekadasi day and do so many things because there's this link we all have with you. And we didn't realize that this was why we were making these sacrifices for you, Gurudev. I, I just wanted to say that, Gurudev, no one will smile at us the way you do. No one will chastise us, Pitambar Keshwanal Nikanta, myself, with so much of affection like you do. No one will sing so sweetly, Gurudev, so transcendently sweet like you do. No one will hug all the devotees. His grace now, Harinamananda Prabhu, Nashingananda Prabhu, Chagap Chibanga Sundar Prabhu, and Danudar Prabhu, the way you do, Gurudev. No one will make the most amazing, tantalizing, taste by dancing noodles like you do, Gurudev, and still serve us when after you make these breaths. No one will speak so softly so full of love and compassion to us the way you do. No one will love us the way you do, Guru Dev. And not only us, your disciples, but everybody, your God family, your God brothers whom you love so dearly. We've seen so many pictures that have now come forward um, after your passing and, and when, you, when you were ill of your beautiful pictures of you with your brothers. And just show, this shows your love for everybody, Guru. And no one will place your loving hand over Yadav and bless him like you do. And especially Guru, no one will glorify Srila Prabhupada with so much of vigor and condition you do. 
No one will just take the Ujjain Brahmanaris when they have to do margin, Gundi Chajana or cleaning like you do, Gurudev. And no one will cook so expertly like you do, Gurudev. No one will walk so amazing from an airport like you've just stepped out of some, like you so perfectly, like, like you, you didn't even travel for many hours with no weariness on your face and still carry yourself so, so regal like you do, Gurudev. The Malavati um, has been so many opportunities to serve you directly. Um, and and Harinanda, and, and we're so grateful for the opportunities we have. We have been given to serve, serve, your, serve you in your bar form. Margaret of Sepray says that she was very anxious to cook another huge feast for you and, and make cook your fruit prep. And that would mean that we would engage in, in, in serving you directly. We understand that you left the instructions um, for us. And we're so grateful for everything that has been documented and all the riches and all the, your course that, that we have, we can uh, take as your one uh, after you left this, this material, your, after you have your physical form. But the instructions that have left in this last week have been so prolonged to me. I realized that they, we all come alone, we have to leave alone. And there's only we have to depend on spirit master, Srila Prabhupada and the Lord. Because sometimes you may put in that vision and you had the entire entourage by you, although we were seemingly, which took me so long to understand this. I was, I was very, very upset with so much for years. And I was very upset with the Lord, thinking, why did he miss half this way? And I was expecting Lord Krishna to make these miracles and just everything so perfect and so good. And, and it all turned out the complete opposite. But I realized that this, your lean actually was more glorious lesson for us to learn. Or that we have to depend every single second on the mercy of our spirit master, and the mercy of the Prophet and the Lord. But you, the Gurudev, you were, you were surrounded by very, very exalted personalities in your passing. In your classes that you were giving every day, Jane, um, you were like most doing like five to six classes every day. And you stressed so much about Ekadivrets and um, so many things that we do. I really, really appreciated those classes so much. And um, I was new hand with Chenya Prabhu. I was thinking that an IO became initiated. I was not, I was not taking so much out of me that I should have. And I realized it because of the association I was surrounded by. And when I started associating with the bodies who, every time when you spoke to them, they said, it's only by Guru Maja's mercy. Only by Guru Maharaj's mercy. I couldn't understand that. I was thinking, no, it's Prabhupada, it's Shila Prabhupada, it's Shila Prabhupada. But when I started associating more with those devotees and started understanding that actually it's only by your mercy, Shila Gurudev, that we are actually making some progress or surviving in this material world. And, and there was one example. Um, that, that, that I, I felt was when, when last year I was going through such a difficult patch and I was thinking I needed to write to you because I was feeling that I'm, no matter how much I'm trying to overcome some obstacles, I, I wasn't succeeding and I needed your mercy. And I didn't write. I didn't write because I was thinking you're so busy. You have so many things to do. Like, why should I waste my time to, to tell you all what's happening with me and my insignificant problems? 
And then this year started and it started off even worse. And I was feeling that this year was supposed to be a nice year, but it was even more intense and more difficult. And, and I just wanted you to say that it will all be okay. And when you did, I realized that, that, that you were, you know, you, you are always taking care of us. And, and I, I, I was just thinking that this year, the reason why I was feeling, I didn't know that this was going to be, we would be having this coronavirus and we would all be um, going through so many things and we would have this loss of you. And, and I could see that this was, the reason I was feeling anxious of this year was because, because we, we it, it, it's a very difficult, difficult time. Um, when Nishing Ananda Prabhu was telling us that we should think of like some personal instructions, when, when I was dressing this morning, I was thinking of wearing my favorite color, pink and black. And then I remembered uh, one of my God family members said, too much doesn't like black. And I immediately changed from black to another color. And, and I was also thinking of how, when uh, Man, Manu Prabhu, Manuswita Prabhu was saying that you were so impeccable in terms of cleanliness, you would be so strict, such a stigler when it came to cleanliness of everything. You would never be unkempt in any way, not your hair, not your clothing, not even a crease on your clothing. Um, in, 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 in your cooking, in everything you did, there was so much of cleanliness. And you would, I remember how you would chastise um, some devotees that had, they were boys and they had their hair like so long and you would say, we shouldn't have that. And you would, you would really, really um, scold the devotees who would keep like, you know, like mustaches and beards. And he was saying, are we Mohammedans? And you, you were so perfect in whatever you did. And, and you also didn't like like tattoos. You were so much against tattoos. And there were so many things that you didn't like. You didn't like, like when, when Prabhu, uh, I was hearing a class earlier about when someone was saying, Gumaj was saying golf, uh, chasing uh, is so, so ridiculous, chasing a white ball all over the field. And, and I was thinking of how you would also not like fireworks. And the ones how you got so upset when you were in, staying in Indonesia and the fireworks was just going off nonstop. So there were so many things that you didn't like that was, that was like unnecessary. And it, these lessons are for us to, to learn that, you know, we should folk just be simple and straightforward in, in everything we do so we can, we can grow our spiritual lives much quicker. And, and you also expressed this in, in the classes about Ekadasi. And you were saying, Yes, in the beginning, when you're doing a car, the scene, you may eat the whole day. And then you were explaining how we should slowly, slowly give up and maybe only eat two meals. And you were saying maybe just one meal. And then you're explaining how we should um, eat just uh, no grain the day before also. So you were explaining so many things of how we could move on a different level in our own spiritual lives. Um, there, was, there was something that I was as a mother desires that, like I always wanted my son Yadav that he would grow up and then he would serve you as a personal servant and travel with you and, and be able to massage your lotus feet and take care of you and help you when you would travel. And, and I now didn't have that fulfilled, but today he surprised me. He was like up early. He had two Zoom classes at nine o'clock and at, at, at half past 11 but he helped me set up the RT trays and he cut all the vegetables for the stir fry noodles and for the other subjis. And he was like getting all the paraphernalia ready and the flowers and everything for the, for the push barbie shake. And, and I was thinking that that desire in my heart, I was feeling so strongly yesterday that, oh, yeah, this couldn't serve you. And, um, and then today when he did this, it was like just that, I realized there's so much things that you actually do and, and that's like, it's still there. The mercy is still there. And um, to me, this is like so special. I remember when we used to always come to the airport and there was one instruction you always gave us, which stayed with me till today. Um, we used to always follow you and used to walk so fast, Gurmaj, we could never catch up with you. But when, when, 
uh, when we had a class with you at the airport, you told us, I don't want you to become uh, goons. That means just follow me only. And what you implied was that we should go and be surrounding ourselves by all spiritual masters, get their mercy, take their association, listen to them and, and relish the nectar of all the spiritual masters. And I understand also why you said that now, because every single spiritual master is part of Srila Prabhupada. And when I was listening to all the classes since the time you have not been well, and also after your passing by all your God brothers, I, I have been so amazed to see how you have touched every single God brother with so much of love and so much of compassion and so much of care. And, and that's why also you want us to also take all of the association, not, not you didn't want us to just like be wherever you go and only come for your classes and be around you only. And, and that instruction I took to heart very seriously. And um, I also remember uh, I heard a class where uh, His Holiness uh, Bhakti Sachidan and Maj was saying that Guru Maj, you have no envy. You have no envy for anyone in your dealings. You, was, you always encouraged every single person, every single devotee, every single disciple to do much better. And that's something that we can all learn as a God family, that we should not be envious of each other. We should always try to lift each other up in, in our spiritual lives. When, when you were giving about five to six classes every day, in the morning when I would um, try to hear His Holiness uh, Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj and His Holiness uh, uh, Bibi Govinda Maharaj uh, doing their Japa classes, and at the same time, your class would be on for the Bengali devotees. And I have no clue what is any words in Bengali besides Kubalobashi. And I was thinking um, when you would, I, I would still put your class on while chanting Japa. Um, I would have like three phones and I would have like everybody chanting Japa, including Srila Prabhupada. But I would put your Bengali classes because you would sing so beautifully. You would speak so sweetly to the devotees when you would speak Bengali. And you sounded so, so beautiful when you would speak. And you would laugh even more when you would speak Bengali than when you would speak uh, with the devotees in English. And I realized that it was like your natural dialect. So you, would, you, you had so much of these expressions that were so beautiful. If you, if, if everyone can like try to go back to Rumaj's classes in Bengali and just listen to him, they were so special. And the way he would just like laugh and laugh, it, it was very precious. And I really appreciated that. Um, there's one thing that I picked up um, and which I regret not doing is that this concept of revealing one's mind in confidence is so important for devotees. Um, I didn't tell you, Gumaj, what was seated deeply rooted in my heart, which is the anathas which holds me back in my spiritual life. And I regret very much so that I didn't tell you all these things that have become pediments on my path or my spiritual bhakti. And if, if there's something I can share with everybody is that please, if you have something, these are the loving exchanges of revealing one's heart. Uh, revealing one's mind in confidence. And I regret not doing that. And I just wanted to also say, um, I don't know how you did it go much, how you looked so amazing when, when we, we would just wait for you when you would come out of the airport, there would be this aura and glow around you. And everybody would stop what they're doing and they would just watch you nonstop. And you had not one crease on your clothing and not even one weariness look in your eyes or your face. And to me, this just shows what type of a personality you are, Gurmaj. So I, I want to say that there's so many lessons I've learned from you. And I'm so grateful that I've learned these lessons. And now I would beg all the devotees, yesterday when, when Tribhanga Sundar Prabhu was saying that we should 
um, if we need to cry, we should cry like a queen cries for the king when he leaves. So there's this concept of that when we grieving. I, I was once told when my dad passed away, we, all my sisters were told that we should not even shed a tear. And it's now 17 years later, we're still crying. So I said, I will not do that this time. I will, I will grieve how much I need to. And I want to be with all my God family, to listen to them also, how they feel. And like today, I can see so many people, so many, so many of, our, of our God family, they, they have so many things that they, they need to express. And it's important for us to express this. So for myself, I just want to say, Thank you, Gurudev, for all that you have given us. You are most indeed the most glorious, glorious spiritual master. And I'm so blessed that I'm, you have chosen and accepted me as your disciple. And I will try my best to get rid of all these bad qualities and, and take full shelter of all your instructions. Srila Bhakti Chau Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Uh, okay, am I, am I on? Yeah. While Rasa Stali was speaking about the things, the list of things that Maharaj does not like, I um, I remember the one time uh, one of Maharaj's god brothers here in Johannesburg uh, arranged a picnic at Zoo Lake, and we all attended. And when Maharaj arrived at the picnic, first thing his opening sentence was. I'm surprised we're having a picnic. You know, during Srila Prabhupada's time, we never had a picnic. We're too busy uh, trying to find ways to serve Srila Prabhupada, and we had no time for leisure. So picnics are not part of our uh, uh, legacy uh, in ISKCON. And then he said, one of the things we have to do in our leisure time, if we have any, is uh, we should meditate on ways and how to serve Srila Prabhupada. And then he had every devotee in the, or in the gathering uh, take the microphone and make a commitment as to how we are going to serve Srila Prabhupada. And uh, that really stuck with me. So one time when we were at the airport, I remember uh, Amrita Radhika uh, brought Maharaj an offering of freshly washed uh, cherries and uh, she gave it to Mayur, uh, her, her youngest child, who was quite young at that time, very young, to give to her. And when, uh, she, uh, so in her nervousness and in her state of awe and reverence, she told Mayur, bow down before you give the cherries. And then, she, and then uh, she, Mayur was nervous himself, and she said, she said to him, take your shoes out and bow down. And then Maharaj, he said, that's not necessary. No, no, you don't have to scold. You don't have to force him to do this. And then he took the cherry uh, from uh, Mayur. So today, I don't know how old Mayur is and how, what's he doing today, but his elder brother Manoj will join us now. And I'm so happy to hear that Manoj will uh, say a few words. So Manoj, please unmute yourself and speak. Hare Krishna. Um, can everyone hear me? Yes, thank you. So, Hare Krishna, everyone. Um, Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shrimati Bhakti Chao Swami Niti Namine. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine. Om Ajnana Timiranda Sya, Gyanan Jana Shalakaya, Chakshuru Milita Mena, Tasme Shri Guru Venama. So hi Krishna everyone. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity. And um, uh, I thought I'd just use this opportunity to share some of my experiences with Maharaj. And uh, particularly a few that I remember that I thought you may also recollect as most of you were probably with me at that time. So um, one particular memory that I recollect, I was probably around 10 or 12 years old, and it was at um, Harina Prabhu's home. 
And, uh, you know, being very young, you tend to be very playful and move around, especially during class. So I remember I was probably the only child uh, or only kid. Uh, and it was, it was all Maharaj's disciples. And um, it was in Hari, uh, Harinamanda Prabhu's lounge, you know, the carpet area, you know. And I remember I was sitting towards the back and I was playful. And, and when there's carpet, you tend to look around what there is because you, as a kid, you're not really interested in what's going on. And I remember Maharaj saw that I was a little bit distracted, you know. So he called me and he asked me to come sit right in front, um, like literally right in front of him. I never even remember I was trying to sit very proper, you know, like uh, cross-legged and try and listen, you know. And then he could still see that I was a little bit distracted. So I was playing with my feet or, you know, and uh, Maharaj, what he did then, he, he, he actually made the class almost a conversation between me and him. So every point he would make, he would ask me, okay, so what did you understand, you know? Or, or you know, just to see if I was paying attention. And then I, could, I realized that, oh my God, wow, I need to like really focus and listen, you know? And, um, and I remember throughout that class, I even remember till today, it's probably, it was probably like almost uh, 15 years ago. And he, he even was speaking about the nine gates and uh, he would ask me every few minutes, what, he, what is this? And this allowed me to really focus, you know, and even at that young age, and he was just, he was just teaching us that no matter your age, like you need to make sure that you're always attentive. And, and, and it was, I just found through that whole experience that it wasn't even like where he was, um, he was doing it for my own benefit that although I was very young, I, I still needed to listen, you know, and whatever I took out of it that I would use in my life. So um, I, I completely enjoyed that experience. And I even remember that I felt comfortable. I wasn't even nervous, you know. And I, at that moment when I was responding to Maharaj, I didn't even know that there were so many devotees around or anything, you know. And I think Maharaj even asked uh, at the end, he's like, whose son is this? And then my mommy was sitting at the back and she was saying, yeah, that's my son. And, and my dad smiled and um, through that encounter, that was the moment I realized that this is my Guru Maharaj and, uh, and I felt, I felt, uh, I felt, I, I, I felt absolutely amazing. And I remember from that day, I always knew that Bhakti Charaswaman Maharaj is my Guru Maharaj. And um, I'll share one other experience as well. Um, we, we, I, I had the fortune of going to Botswana for the temple opening. And um, this was some years ago when, when they had a massive temple opening. And I went with Save Sachi and a few other devotees. And um, during that wonderful temple opening ceremony, um, I remember I was given the opportunity to sing for a little while. And it was probably like the first or second time that I ever sang. And uh, Maharaj was present, and it was the first time I've ever sang in the presence of Maharaj. And I even remember uh, I was really nervous, and by the Lord's mercy, um, I was able to sing, you know. And um, I saw Maharaj, or oh, one devotee actually told me after he was asking, who's that devotee that was singing? I want to know, you know. And then, um, and then they told him, Maharaj, that it was actually me who sang. And uh, I even remember I spoke to Maharaj that day. Uh, I, I got the courage to go and speak to Maharaj in his room, you know. And uh, I was there and Maharaj, he, he noticed, okay, he knows who I am. And he remembered that this was the devotee that sang Amritam, Amrita Radhika Vachi's son. And because uh, he always remembered me from small. And then uh, he asked me, so uh, do you have anything to ask me? And I, I didn't know what to say, but my heart started speaking then. And I asked Maharaj, Maharaj, I would like to go under your shelter. And, and I didn't even know that I was going to ask it. It was my heart speaking at that time, you know. And Maharaj smiled and he said, yes, sure. Uh, he, said, uh, he said, I would love for you to travel with me. As Purnendu Prabhu was mentioning earlier as well, he, he also asked me to travel with him to Australia, you know. 
and and that way I would get his personal association and and we would build a relationship you know and um, somehow um, I didn't end up going you know and and I only found out later that um, there was I don't know if you all know there's a devotee called Suman Prabhu and he was uh, looking after Maharaj's health as a doctor and when he came to South Africa um, Suman Prabhu was here and he stayed with me for, for one day. And I even remember the next day, um, Maharaj phoned me personally on my phone. I don't know how he got my name. He asked me, um, Manoj, how is uh, Suman Prabhu doing? Is he okay? Has he eaten? Um, uh, will you be taking him to the airport? Everything A to Z. And I just realized at that time that, wow, if I had to travel with, to, with Maharaj to Australia or anywhere, actually Maharaj would be taking care of me. Not the other way around, not the way I'll be going and I'll be serving him. And that's how amazing Maharaj was, that he would actually take care of his servants, you know. Um, and lastly, I, if I could like to share the last experience I had, which was not so long ago, maybe a year or two ago, when Maharaj came to the Lineja temple and um, he gave a class. And um, I remember I was probably sitting right at the back, you know, trying to, I always try to hide, you know, from Maharaj because I, I get to, I tend to get a little bit shy. But um, anyway, uh, after Maharaj say, after Maharaj gave his class, he wasn't feeling too well. So uh, he, he wasn't able to sing. So then the devotees, um, um, I was asked them to sing, you know. And while I was singing, uh, again, I, oh my word, it was a, a very... It was absolutely scary for me to sing in the presence of Maharaj, you know. But at the same time, um, I felt very empowered and blessed by Maharaj's mercy, you know. So while I was singing and uh, Maharaj was, um, there was devotees gathered around Maharaj and they were, um, and he was giving darshan and I was singing through that. And then um, I even remember while the kirtan started picking up and going on, Maharaj was trying to see who's singing again, you know. Oh, and then um, he saw me and um, and I was singing at that time, I was playing harmonium and he looked at me and he smiled. And and that smile just told me that you have my blessings, you know. And it, I felt absolutely like heart, my heart was feeling very warm knowing that I have Maharaj's blessings, you know. And it reminded me that I'm always doing any of my service for Maharaj and for Srila Prabhupada and Shishinitai Gaurari. And Maharaj came to me while I was singing, sitting down, and he took a garland and he put it on me. And uh, oh, and I just, and that gave me that conviction that I have Maharaj's blessings. And that was my last experience with Maharaj. And, uh, but he's always with us. I believe that. And uh, I'm, I feel that he is my Guru Maharaj, and I feel blessed to be in association with all you wonderful Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. And uh, I'm extremely blessed to have the fortune of um, Nishingananda Prabhu and Madhya Mataji, who are, my guru, who are both my gurus, who to teach me and guide me in every way. And, and thank you everyone, everyone for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, my loving Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Manoj. Um, we'll ask Nalini Kanta Prabhu to speak now. Unmute yourself, Prabhu, and speak. Um, Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimad Bhakti Chatu Swami Itinami Shnida Jeta Supraneta Vagminam Chara Sukutam Prabhupada Agada Pranam Naomi Bhakti Charupadam Namo Vishpadaya Krishna Prasad Bhutale Shrimad Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tiname Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nidrise Sasunyavadi Paskarya de Satarani. I offer my respectful obeisances unto all the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord. They are just like desire trees which can fulfill the desire of everyone. And they are full of compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. There are most dear memories that I have of our beloved Guru Maharaj. Firstly, I, was, I always desired to massage Guru Maharaj's lotus feet. 
and one day, by his mercy, he fulfilled my desire. And I was ecstatic to render this service. It was a dream come true. After, afterwards, Guru Maharaj told me that my service mood is very nice. And he was pleased. Guru Maharaj is so kind to accept the service from me because he fulfilled my desire to serve him. And on top of that, he glorified me. The lesson I learned is Guru Maharaj, no matter how insignificant service you render he, to him, he is pleased that his, that is his divine mercy. Secondly, I also invited Guru Maharaj to come home and I used to dream that Guru Maharaj would come home. One fine day, Guru Maharaj accepted my invitation and came home. It was such a blessing to have Guru Maharaj knowing that he made time from his busy schedule for us. Guru Maharaj kept his promise, so I learned to always fulfill my promise to others. I also learned that it is important to make time for devotees. I, I am so grateful to Guru Maharaj for giving us Udav Gita classes every day during the lockdown period. He was so thoughtful that he chose this topic to help us cope with this worldwide pandemic. He gave us the sword of knowledge to cut the attachments from this material world. In conclusion, I am so proud that Guru Maharaj is such a true servant of Srila Prabhupada and after and a fearless soldier and a fierce preacher. I am eternally grateful to Guru Maharaj for teaching me these lessons and always loving and guiding me. I pray to Guru Maharaj that I can be fixed up in my Krishna conscious and always serve his lotus feet and please him. I pray to follow in his footsteps, which is difficult, but I'll try and be fully dedicated to Srila Prabhupada in Iskon. I would also like to thank the following devotees who gave us, um, who helped us in our Krishna conscious. His grace, Narsingananda Prabhu, Her grace, Madri Mataji, His, His grace, uh, Harinamananda Prabhu, uh, Her grace, Bhagavati Mataji, uh, Mataji, all the Vaishnavas who were so caring to us, we thank you. We, I love Guru Maharaj, we love Guru Maharaj and hope that we can follow in his footsteps. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, <clears throat> so at one of the retreats uh, that Himanga Prabhu had arranged, actually Himanga Prabhu, those retreats were so amazing. It was such an amazing service that you did. I'll be forever indebted to you. And I'm sure Maharaj is uh, unlimitedly pleased with your efforts there and uh, in the future. Maharaj made a statement in one of those retreats that stuck with me also. He said, in glorification of Srila Prabhupada, he said, it's like when we stand right in front of a mountain, we may not understand the greatness of the mountain, but as we step away from the mountain, we realize how great and how huge, how magnanimous that mountain is. So, um, in red, uh, uh, and Maharaj was saying that as they were serving Srila Prabhupada, they were so busy to notice many things. But now as the years are passing uh, after Srila Prabhupada's disappearance uh, in his physical form from the planet, they are relishing uh, so much more the glories of Srila Prabhupada. And I, I pray that the same thing is happening in all of our hearts and continues to happen in regards to Maharaj. Um, I recall that uh, in the times when Maharaj came to the Lanasia temple, he was one of the few speakers who could pack that temple room until it overflowed right to the entrance. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, he was, he was such an amazing person. And not every speaker can do that, that could fill the temple room and then uh, uh, have devotees overflow with eagerness to come there. Uh, Maharaj is a type of sannyasi who would do every service. When he met Srila Prabhupada, one of, you, one of you were mentioning how in the first meeting, Prabhupada asked him, 
to translate the books back into Bengali. Um, so, you know, Prabhupada wouldn't give that service to just anybody. Marge was a person of great intellect that Prabhupada recognized immediately and of great chastity to Prabhupada. Because one devotee was speaking about how when Prabhupada asked him to translate the books into French, Prabhupada was very particular because any scholars from the university wanted, were volunteering uh, to Prabhupada to translate the books into French. But Prabhupada wanted a devotee to do it because he knew in that way the most important quality was the chastity of the translator to Prabhupada. So that was an amazing thing that he saw and uh, he recognized immediately in Maharaj that he gave the service to him. One of the things that really, uh, you know, I've had the good fortune of hearing and associating with many of the sannyasis in our movement, but one thing that really amazed me about Maharaj and really endears him to me uh, and will continue to do so is his uh, uh, ability of not just being a sannyasi who carries a danda and goes from place to place, sits on a vyasasan, delivers a lecture, initiates disciples, and moves on. He was with such a versatile person that you could see him planting flowers, you could see him tending to the garden, you could see him with a broom in his hand. Uh, sweeping the floor, you could see him serving devotees, uh, showing him with his hands messed and uh, cooking in the kitchen, like many of you did. Uh, absolutely versatile in character, uh, able to do so many services. And uh, this, was, uh, this is such an endearing quality that Marge, uh, in, in spite of doing all of these services for Srila Prabhupada, he still had time to ask how you are to any devotee who was not supposedly important. And he would remember the devotee's names, like Imanga Prabhu said, he would remember many things about the devotee too. So um, another thing that really impresses me about Maharaj is that he was able to recognize the need in society and fulfill it. Maharaj was able to recognize that what was the need of the, in the society of devotees, that the future generations will need murtis of the Guru Parampara. And he went ahead and he fulfilled that need. He, he understood that the devotees needed a devotee uh, a, a temple to make deity outfits, and he went and he fulfilled that. He just, just, just didn't build a temple in a record-breaking 10 months, but he created facilities for the rest of the movement, the rest of the community of devotees to keep the processes that Prabhupada gave us, the nine processes of devotional service awake. Then, you know, in, De in Deland, he started the food on, you know, on wheels. Uh, and to, uh, in the time of the pandemic, to uh, very, very intelligently arrange food for life for the frontliners, for the first responders, the um, fire brigade people, the police station, the doctors and nurses. And this was like such an incredible preaching. Like even if you look at the food for life kitchen that he established in Ujjain, he saw the need that the, the people, the children, their diet was the chapatis, halava, and sabji. And he got that chapati machine going. And these were things that maybe devotees hadn't thought about previously. And Maharaj was able to see ahead. He was such a visionary that, uh, you know, he could see the need and he was able to fulfill it. And one of the things that really amazed me was despite all of the facility that Maharaj had, he never owned any personal property. And even up until the age of 75, we see he traveled practically in many instances without a servant. Few times he traveled with a servant and many times it was not the same servant. It was uh, always somebody different. 
it was it was uh, such an amazing uh, sense of renunciation and his dependence on Krishna uh, that he would uh, understand that Krishna was always protecting him. Prabhupada was always protecting him. And um, just in conclusion, I wanted to say that I, um, re you know, yesterday I was listening to one of the uh, our friends from Chopati. Uh, one, uh, actually, he's in America, one of Radhanath Maharaj's disciples. And he was telling about how uh, the Chopati Yatra has got such a debt to His Holiness Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. And, and he went on to say, now we all know how much nourishment we get from the Chopati Yatra. There's such a sweet speakers from there that you can listen to. There's Iskand Jazayatri that's coming from there. You know, the Bhakti Vedanta Hospital, so many things. All of this would not have been possible without His Holiness Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. Because in the time when, uh, uh, you know, the unfortunate situation with Kirtan and Anta uh, happened and he broke away from Iskand, Iskand Chopati uh, was existing and the Yatra was existing, Radna Maharaj was there, but they were not called the ISKCON, so to speak. They were not registered uh, under ISKCON. And Radna Maharaj explains that at that time, when he was suffering the pain of separation from his god brothers and god sisters and not, and not being able to. Uh, uh, um, associate with them. He said the first person on a, one Sunday to call him uh, while he was in Juhu was His Holiness Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. And Bhakti Chiru Maharaj said to Ratna Maharaj at that time, can I come over to Chopati? And Ratna Maharaj was so excited and he said, yes Maharaj, you are all, always most welcome. So Marge explains that during the Sunday feast lecture, uh, Bhakti Churu Maharaj, right in the middle of the Sunday feast lecture, entered the temple room. And, Radhan, and he, as he walked towards Radhanath Maharaj, he hugged him. And they, it was such, a, it was such a, a, a situation that many of the devotees in the room were tearing. And then Maharaj proceeded to uh, Radhanath Maharaj lovingly gave him uh, an opportunity to sp uh, speak and address and give his association to all of them. And at that time, His Holiness Bhakti Chiru Maharaj was saying that whatever difficulties you had, all those people are now long gone. They are gone. Please come back to, now you come back under Prabhupada's shelter. And that was the turning moment when Iskand Chopati uh, when, uh, became Iskand Chopati. And uh, it was all due to the love, the kind heart, like Prabhupada explained, uh, a devotee should have the heart of a Bengali mother. And uh, that was the embodiment of love uh, that was able to mediate in tough circumstances. And in the last phone call that Maharaj made, to us here at home. Um, he gave us that hope that no matter what difficulties there, are, there is in ISKCON, we were assured that by the love of Maharaj, uh, everything will always remain positive uh, for uh, the rest of our existence. So, and that love is something that is eternal, that we shall cherish. And with that concluding words, I'd like to say that in, uh, when we were in Muldersdruff, the one time Maharaj entered the kitchen and His Grace Tribhanga Sunil Prabhu was cooking for the devotees and he was putting the tomatoes together with the stems into the uh, food processor for the potato party. And Maharaj told him, Tribhanga, we don't, we don't put that part of the potato, uh, tomato in. You have to cut it out. So, uh, you know, he showed us how uh, to make an offering, a better offering. So uh, with those few words, concluding words, I'd like to give 
to our last but not least speaker, His Grace Chibanga Sunil Prabhu, who actually uh, specified he wanted to speak last, otherwise I would have asked him to speak first. Thank you very much. Chibanga Sunil Prabhu, please unmute your mic. His Holiness Bhakti Churu Swami Maharaj Ki So I hope you can hear me and see me also. <laughs> you can see I haven't shaved uh, can since March. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, so that's good. Uh, just, yeah, now you can see I haven't shaved for a while. I mean, since Maharaj went to hospital. Um, of course, we we couldn't really uh, determine what the outcome would be like, whether Maharaj would survive uh, his ordeal at the hospital. And uh, of course you could say, uh, you know, we were in denial of the real situation and um, we always had hope and we were praying and depending on Krishna. So that is the mood. And Prabhupada taught us that actually, because they were praying for Srila Prabhupada also to remain on this planet, even though his body from the external point of view was being ravished by diabetes. And uh, so when Prabhupada was on his uh, uh, bed in Rindavan, uh, of course, many of his disciples gathered around him uh, during the last days, including His Holiness Bhakti Charaswami Maharaj, as you heard, was his very intimate servant for some time before that. Uh, Prabhupada told his disciples that, you know, because they were seeing Prabhupada's condition deteriorate uh, the last few days of his stay on this planet, then Prabhupada told them, they don't think that this won't happen to you. So we are, of course, all uh, have some exit from this world we don't know what that exit would look like or be like we know the previous gurus and sannyasis who passed away um, where you know they didn't have a classical passing away most of them uh, you know we know tamal krishna Maharaj passed away in an accident and bhakti tirta swami uh, had cancer and had his leg amputated. So we may question why these things are happening to pure devotees of the Lord. And uh, that's inconceivable because Krishna is inconceivable. And sometimes these things happen. Uh, I think we lost you there. Hare Krishna. Devotee. And when he does that, it might appear that he's pure. indicating he wasn't in pain. 
So when Haridas Thakur was whipped in 21 marketplaces, Take the Srimad Bhagavatam, for instance. The Srimad Bhagavatam is an amazing devotional work, if you read it cover to cover. But it's only a devotional work for devotees. For devotees. For, th for thousands of years, others were reading the Bhagavatam, were not devotees. Kamis were reading the Bhagavatam. Impersonalists were reading the Bhagavatam. Mayavadis were reading the Bhagavatam, but when they read the Bhagavatam, they get a different meaning. The meaning of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, it does not enter their hearts. No, that does not enter their hearts. No. So when we look at things from a devotional point of view, with the eyes of love, the self of love, like the Brahma Samhita says, we'll have a different view of things. We'll have a different dimension of things. So we have to understand the inconceivable plan of the Lord, at least try to, uh, uh, and then we will actually be able to uh, realize what is going on. Of course, the passing away of Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, uh, is actually very significant for the world. It's significant. Maharaj's presence, I believe, on this planet um, was actually very auspicious from the time he took the Krishna consciousness and from the time, of course, he left this world. It was auspicious. While Maharaj was here, everything was auspicious, despite all the ups and downs. But there's a new a uh, crisis that's looming, which we haven't even fathomed yet. For the next five years, according to astrologers, there's going to be a much more serious calamity that's going to take place that we can't even imagine. So, of course, we could say, well, uh, you know, Mars was creating auspiciousness on the planet. And Krishna removed Maharaj by taking him, recalling him back to the spiritual world so the demigods can actually deal with all the suras here on this planet. And uh, of course, create what we'd like to see, a world, spiritual world, dharmic order. Uh, in the near future. And then only Krishna consciousness can actually take off. It cannot take off otherwise. Where is this every town and village uh, idea? It'll never manifest at, on this current level of the way things are. But Yara Deke Tarakara, uh, you know, preaching to everyone out there is not actually going to be possible um, without the world becoming more spiritualized and a new dharma world order being established based on Vedic principles. So um, Lord Chaitanya's movement is only going to last for 10,000 years of which 500 years have passed. And now we are going to go through a storm of crises that's going to you know, be prevalent all over the world. This coronavirus is only the beginning, by the way. Uh, there'll be lots of turmoil, wars, pestilence, starvation, you name it, it'll all be there. Until, of course, people uh, have no choice but to turn to uh, Krishna consciousness. So, 
of course, I'm not an astrologer, but I've studied what the other astrologers have been saying, and I believe they are correct. Uh, in terms of my personal experiences with Maharaj, of course, there are many, and of course, you know, we don't have the time to go through all of them. But I can say that uh, without uh, any doubt that uh, being a mercy case, you know, uh, Maharaj had given me some special privileges as a disciple uh, in order to keep me in Krishna consciousness. So uh, I just wanted to uh, keep that uh, theme in mind when I'm discussing Maharaj because what what is happening? Sorry, I just got a my phone is going to switch off, so I'm just going to put the battery on now. Yeah. So what is happening is. Uh, my relationship with Maharaj over the last 31 years have been amazing in the sense that I had countless of intimate moments with Mar Guru Maharaj. And of course, that may become the envy of many disciples. But, you know, Maharaj uh, was very particular about devotees becoming falsely proud and, um, you know, thinking, well, I'm better than all the others. And so when, when, when he saw signs of that, and you know that, when he saw signs of that, what do you do? He would uh, neglect the devotee. He would neglect the disciple. He wouldn't actually t give him any attention. Sometimes you can be right in front of him. He won't even speak to you. He'll just walk past you. So um, that experience I'm sure you had also. But therefore, uh, I can't afford to actually be proud, even after Maharaj has left, thinking, well, I'm a senior disciple. You know, look at me. I had so many privileges Maharaj gave me. He discussed so many intimate things with me. When I talk about, like, intimate with Maharaj, I mean, if I tell you like one time Maharaj put tea lock on my forehead, okay? He allowed me to use his private bathroom in his quarters in Ujjain. He made me sit take prasadam with him. He discussed confidential matters with me. But the point is that um, all these things that happened between Maharaj and I uh, is the relationship we had. And of course, I, personally wanted to always keep my distance with Maharaj because I felt I didn't want to become familiar. And familiarity is the worst thing because once you become familiar, you start finding faults and you cause offenses. So, you know, of course, I, I, I allowed all the other disciples to surround Maharaj and get his mercy. And, so, you know, of course, I, especially in the later years, uh, I actually was very restrained about you know, I mean, Hainam and Prabhu would invite me, come and take prasadam with Maharaj, come and sit with him. But I didn't want to take advantage of uh, Maharaj's generosity in that sense, because obviously I didn't want to become too familiar and I wanted to keep a healthy distance um, so that I can see him with awe and reverence. And uh, even though Maharaj may have sometimes seen me in a different light. But uh, we know from Prabhupada's example, when Prabhupada left this world, um, he entrusted some disciples uh, to obviously initiate and, 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 and give some space to other disciples also to take part in the movement. But they were so proud, some of them at least, that they took control of everyone's lives and they destroyed the movement practically, almost destroyed it. And that was the zone lecharya system. So we have to be careful after the acharya passes away that we don't fight amongst ourselves and um, 
cause any disruption or, you know, we have to be very respectful to each other. And even if we're a senior, so-called senior, we should be a servant to the other devotees. So, you know, we shouldn't act like some of Prabhupada's disciples did when they took over from Prabhupada and they tried to, uh, uh, you could say, heavy the other disciples of Prabhupada. And a lot of them left because of that. So, you know, my role is as a servant of all of you. And anytime you need to cry on a shoulder, you can come to my shoulder. <laughs> I mean, it's gone resolved, by the way. We give you tissues for your issues. And uh, so we can help you. I mean, I can help you. I'm serving the other devotees. I can help and serve you as well. So please do that. And, uh, you know, this, this way I can serve Maharaj because Maharaj wanted us to uh, unify the movement, not to get too much into guru groupism. You know that, and I know that. So let's try to avoid that uh, guru groupism, but, you know, try to work with all the devotees, keep Prabhupada in the center. And uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's something I wrote formally that I wanted to post. I probably would post it on the chat, you know, the WhatsApp, which you can read about um, what Marge said about uh, keeping Prabhupada in the center and uh, how it'll help us in any eventuality. So this is uh, Maharaj's instruction to all of us. Uh, it is unity and diversity, but at the same time, keeping Prabhupada in the center, always. And not forgetting that Prabhupada is our ashraya, our main ashraya, huh? ashraya means shelter. And we have other gurus in ISKCON who can also give us uh, shiksha and uh, advice. Other senior devotees besides gurus also uh, are there. So this support structure we have in ISKCON is very important uh, because it's Prabhupada's ashram, as Maharaj would say. It is not his ashram, not any particular guru's ashram, and therefore, the support structure is for all the devotees, all the disciples, irrespective of who their guru is. And in the future, many gurus will leave their body. And so if we strengthen the support structure for everyone, we'll have a better movement and we will grow and defeat Maya, which is actually attacking the world uh, in every corner. So I, I know it's getting late and I don't want to take too much of your time. But thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I'm so impressed with everyone's sincerity um, because uh, just by hearing all the devotees speak, um, I actually feel more insignificant in front of them because you know I haven't really made much of a contribution to in Maharaj's service uh, as you all have, uh, you all really, uh, exemplary and uh, continue that in the spirit of uh, separation. Vipralamba is our mood. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us that. And uh, that is more exciting and more relishable than actual, uh, you know, being in the presence of the Lord or his pure devotee. So that is uh, the secret of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's. Uh, philosophy, you know, this beautiful lumber set. And that's why he spent uh, so much time in Jagannath Puri because he was also in that mood. And so we can also develop that mood with Guru Maharaj uh, by following his instructions and internalize those instructions and also follow them. And so Maharaj said in that video clip I sent out today that actually uh, the test of the disciple after the guru leaves will be how he or she attaches, 
uh, herself or himself to the instructions and follow them strictly. So that's what we have. That's Guru Maharaj, his presence in his instructions. And don't forget that. So thank you very much. I, uh, I really appreciate your association and your love for Guru Maharaj also. And let us keep things together so that we can be an inspiration to all the other disciples of the other gurus. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much Trimanga Sundar Prabhu for those wonderful words and encouragement and also to support and help the devotees that are having challenges or issues, he will provide the tissues, so don't forget. Uh, we like to thank all the devotees for uh, staying until this time. We also like to thank Zoom for giving us a gift, continue the session. And uh, we will have other sessions uh, for devotees uh, like this, uh, if the need arises, to share our experiences. Uh, I definitely uh, cherished everyone's heartfelt, sincere, and genuine uh, in inspiration and glorification of Guru Maharaj. Uh, I'd like to conclude by reading a letter to Satya Dana by Srila Prabhupada, Calcutta, 20th February, 1972. Srila Prabhupada writes in the letter, so far personal association with the Guru is concerned. I was only with my Guru Maharaj four or five times, but I never felt, uh, sorry, but I never left his association, not even for a moment because I am following his instructions, I have never felt any separation. There are some of my god brothers here in India who had constant personal association with Guru Maharaj, but who are neglecting his orders. This is just like a bug. We sitting on the lap of the king. He may be very puffed up by his position, but all he can succeed in doing is biting the king. Personal association is not so important as association through service. So uh, we, again, stressing the importance of uh, following Guru Maharaj's instructions, keeping Srila Prabhupada in the center, uh, serving the mission of Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj, and by doing this, serving the devotees, mm, uh, following Prabhupada's instructions nicely, we will find that our relationship with Guru Maharaj will become stronger and stronger. And we will be able to experience his presence even greater now than before uh, by following his Vani. Because we will actually realize as our Krishna consciousness mature that the Vani of the spiritual master, the instructions of the spiritual master are non different from the spiritual master. So, uh, we will experience that and uh, we will also, uh, by the blessings, mercy of the Spochu Master of Bhakti Rumaj, of the Vaishnavas, and uh, through the process of Krishna consciousness, as Srila Prabhupada said, there is an ISKCON in the Spochu world. Uh, we will also, one by one, as Krishna, by Krishna's mercy, we will also return back to the Spochu world in the shelter and the service of Guru and Krishna. Thank you very much for everyone. Uh, we will end here. And uh, should we end with a little kirtan? All right. So uh, we'll end with Nishimde uh, Pranams. We'll sing Nishimde Pranams and then we'll end. Namaste Narasimhaya
Hare Krishna. So thank you very much for everyone's attendance. Uh, we will end here and we hope you all have uh, a wonderful night's okay. rest and you don't need to have a safe travel home because you're already safe at home. Stay safe and please be careful. Uh, don't be negligent. Uh, the coronavirus is right now at a very critical juncture in South Africa and across the globe. We are at a, uh, 
a rise, a critical peak. And uh, if we don't take care, uh, we can get uh, infected. So please take care, stay at home, and be quick. Thank you. Hare Krishna.